Okay. All good, Kelly? Good to go? You have quorum. Great. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. I welcome you to today's special meeting of the Transportation Committee. Before we proceed, I'll do a quick roll call and remind everyone uh, we need uh, five members present to maintain quorum. Uh, Councillor Lulas. Councillor Dudas. I'm here. And I saw Councillor Luloff a moment ago. I think he just stepped up. Yeah, I'll put him at the bottom of the deck. Uh, we had regrets from Councillor El Shantiri. Uh, Councillor Deans. I'm here. Okay. Councillor Fleury. Bonjour. Councillor Menard. Here. Councillor Kitts. Here. Councillor DeRuz. Here. Councillor Hubley. Yeah. And Vice Chair Leeper. Yeah. As noted, uh, when the agenda was distributed, we are participating electronically via Zoom, the instructions for members of the public uh, wishing to submit comments to participate as a delegation in this meeting were included in the agenda. Those who did not participate in the meeting can also watch it on our live stream feed through the city's YouTube channel. For those that are participating in the meeting, I do ask you to please keep your microphones on mute until you're called to speak. I'll provide each committee member with the opportunity to ask questions or comment in due course. Committee members will be called on first, followed by the members of council who have joined the meeting today. At any point you wish to speak, please use the raise hand feature within Zoom and the committee coordinator will be watching for those cues. The usual five minute speaking time does apply. Uh, we have, uh, like I mentioned, regrets from Councillor Elshin Thierry. Uh, no declarations have been received. We do have a, a presentation, obviously, on the STO transit study for Gatineau's West End integration with the Ottawa recommendations. Uh, and, uh, and we do have four motions, but we will go through the presentation before we read out the motions uh, prior to going to delegations. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, Council Menard, I'm not sure if you have it in front of you. Uh, we'd like to add one item to the agenda today. Uh, this is staff supported. And maybe Council Menard, if you want to read uh, read the rules of procedure to be suspended. Yes, uh, thanks very much, uh, Chair. And it's that the rules of procedure be suspended in accordance with subsection 16C of the procedure bylaw to consider the following motion in order to allow staff the opportunity to initiate the construction process in a timely manner prior to the winter season. Great, uh, so is that carried to be added to the agenda? You guys see a lot of shaking heads? Great, yes. Sir. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go right back up to the, uh, the reason we're all here today and I'll turn the floor over to Vivi and uh, staff to begin the presentation in regards to STO. Okay, so uh, good morning, Chair and members of Transportation Committee. I'm Vivi Chi, Director of Transportation Planning, and I have a short presentation on our report. But first, I'd like to note that we have staff from STO joining us this morning, specifically Monsieur Marc Rousseau, Director General, and Monsieur Patrick Leclerc, Director of Planning, Development and Communications. Next slide, please. Although this is a project that SDO has undertaken to address the growth and transit needs of Gatineau's Western communities, it's also a very important project for the city of Ottawa. The project will improve interprovincial transit service for customers from both cities. It proposes to reduce up to 70% of the STO bus volumes on our streets in the peak hour. And of course, any project that is related to electric mass public transit is well aligned with our city's climate change master plan. As with any major project, the tramway could be a catalyst for other city building projects as well. Next, please. If this project were not to go ahead, we would see congestion building, continue to build in our downtown and the number of SEO buses alone would increase from today's 115 buses to 170 buses per peak hour by 2031. It would be a less efficient interprovincial service, which in turn means higher operating costs for both transit companies. For the customer, it means longer commute times and loss of productivity, and it would negatively affect our GHG emission reduction targets. Next, please. When we reported to you in September, we presented the status of the project at that time. 
SDO has determined that a system of trams and buses in Gatineau is required and that the connection to Ottawa would be at the Portage Bridge. In Ottawa, there are two corridor options that were identified, Wellington on the surface and Spark Street in a tunnel. The September report identified a number of technical assessments that were underway and also a summary of the results of the online survey this past June and July. At the September meeting, staff were asked to apply two guiding principles as part of the options assessment, which were one, to achieve fewer buses in the core and provide better transit service for customers, and two, to integrate the tramway with our O train line one. Next, please. These three shortlisted options were presented in September. Staff are recommending the endorsement of the all tram option in Gatineau as this would reduce the greatest number of SDO buses operating in Ottawa from today's 115 buses per peak hour down to 35. The all tram scenario complies best with the assessment principle number one, which was reducing the number of buses in the core. Next, please. These six issues were identified in the September report also. While three of the issues are still not fully resolved today, they are not deemed to be showstoppers by Public Services and Procurement Canada or the NCC. The first item is the request to consolidate the nine vehicular accesses to the parliamentary and judicial precincts to fewer access in order to ensure the safe and efficient operation of the tramway. PSPC continue to review this request while considering the need for efficient traffic to and within both precincts and the security issue as well. The second item is a request for additional property on the north side of Wellington to accommodate the tramway, particularly west of Lyon Street. Additional right of way east of Lyon Street would also provide for a better street design, including more space for pedestrians and cyclists. The traffic assessment has been completed at a higher level, at a feasibility level, and there are no showstoppers, particularly for the option that kept traffic in the corridor. However, more detailed assessment is needed in the next phase of the study. The development of the all tram and hybrid options have been mentioned earlier, and this presentation now includes the cost of the options. Next, please. A range of costs was developed based on information is extrapolated from our Confederation Line downtown tunnel and existing information on subsurface conditions, including utilities, as well as high level comparisons to other cities with transit tunnels. Riskier construction is reflected in the estimate for the Spark Street Tunnel. The cost range of between 3.5 billion and 3.9 billion reflects the cost of the entire project, including the all tram corridors in Gatineau. Next, please. From different perspectives, the Spark Street Tunnel has many benefits. For the transit customer, the facility is weather protected with underground connections to the Confederation Line just one block south. For transit operations, it is grade separated, so there will be no interaction with other vehicular traffic or be influenced by external factors such as street closures. The service would be reliable with shorter travel times and, high, and has higher capacity reserves for future increase in service frequency since at-grade intersections and traffic signals are avoided. For traffic, the project would be least disruptive during and post-construction. It also allows the surface streets to evolve with time without interfering with a tramway service. Next, please. For the public realm, the Spark Street Tunnel could be a catalyst to rejuvenate Spark Street. And because it's below ground, it does not compromise federal design standards for Confederation Boulevard, nor interfere with the view of the National War Memorial. The tunnel option aligns with both assessment principles and has very strong support from the respondents of the study survey this past summer. All of these reasons point to Spark Street Tunnel as the optimal corridor for the tramway in Ottawa. The disadvantage of the tunnel option, however, however, is its comparatively higher cost. Next, please. The surface option is relatively easier to construct and as such, it has a lower cost estimate of about 3 billion. This again is for the entire project, including the all tram corridors in Gatineau. 
Being on the surface provides transit customers with convenient access to three surface level stations. Connection to the Confederation line and OC transport buses is just a short walking distance away. A pedestrian tunnel is also proposed, which would provide a convenient link of the two systems at Lion Station. This option also aligns with both assessment principles. Next, please. Both Sparks Tunnel and Wellington surface options are feasible and both comply with the assessment principles. With improved service, both options can help both cities increase our transit modal share, reduce congestion, and reduce emissions. Moving forward with both options uh, provides STO the opportunity to continue discussions with federal stakeholders and refine designs and analyses. Next, please. This issue is not in the report, but the interprovincial transit loop proposal has been in the news recently, and we felt that was important to touch on it briefly today. The loop proposal aims to connect Gatineau and Ottawa downtowns using Portage Bridge and the Alexandra Bridge with Wellington Street being part of the loop. This project on its own would not serve the targeted commuter tri trips from West Gatineau, which is the purpose of the STO tramway study. The interprovincial loop is a long-term vision that requires a comprehensive study, including the assessment of technology options and of course consultation. Neither tramway corridor option precludes a future loop, although there are some differences. The loop technology will have to address the presence of the tramway because the Wellington Street surface option spans part of that loop. After crossing from Portage Bridge, the Spark Street Tunnel would be less integrated with the loop, but it allows flexibility in the choice of loop technology. Next, please. So today, staff are seeking committee's approval of the report recommendations, which pertain to the scope of the SDO tramway study. To recap, recommendations are, one, endorse the all tram scenario in Gatineau, Two, approve the Spark Street Tunnel as the optimal corridor subject to STO securing the project funding. Three, approve the Wellington Street surface with traffic as the alternative corridor if funding for the Spark Street Tunnel cannot be secured with the following conditions for STO. Complete a fulsome assessment of the right-of-way needs and secure sufficient property from the federal government to ensure the safety of all users in the corridor. Complete a detailed plan of other operational requirements in the corridor, such as access to the precincts, tour bus operations, and snow removal, just to name a few. Complete a fulsome network traffic analysis and develop a mitigation plan to address downstream effects on Ottawa streets. Develop a mitigation plan for its tramway service when Wellington is closed to, due to external factors and develop an implementation plan that is coordinated with other projects in the downtown area to minimize traffic disruption during construction. Next, please. Once Transportation Committee and Council have considered this report, the STO will seek approval from the NCC board and the STO board. The STO will complete the study for the portion in Gatineau and finalize the study documentation. And, and the SDO will continue discussions with their funding partners so that this project can advance through the next phases leading to implementation. Next, please. So that is it for the presentation. Thank you, and we're ready for questions. Wonderful, thank you, Vivi. We do have, as mentioned, uh, four motions, first of all, but before we get to that, I wanna give a tip of the hat. I believe uh, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor, the, our Gatineau Mayor, uh, uh, Pernod Jobin uh, is, oh, there you are. Bonjour, Martin. Great. Bonjour, Bonjour. Uh, so he's here as well. So we're Hello, just going to go to the motions here, first of all. Uh, first, I'm virtually stepping out of the chair. Uh, Jeff, you're the chair for five minutes. Um, uh, so the first one is uh, branding and liberally of the STO tram vehicles. So whereas the STO tram could potentially operate on the surface of Wellington, uh, street in Ottawa, and whereas Wellington Street is an iconic corridor that is steeped uh, in Confederation history and where Parliament and the Supreme Court are located, whereas the federal government is expecting to uh, contribute significant funding towards this interprovincial tramway, 
therefore it be resolved that the tramway op if if the tramway ought to our operate on Wellington Street that the branding and livery of the tramway vehicles reflect the colors and the symbols symbolism of the country and be it further resolved that city staff will work with STO on the proposed branding and livery uh, to be presented to the city of Ottawa's transportation committee and federal partners for input prior to the procurement or implementation. I'm back in the chair. All right, uh, Councillor Hoobley has a motion. Bridge, uh, whereas the city, the federal government, and the provincial government have invested $6.7 billion in the city's O train network with stage one and two, and whereas the city is finalizing its planning work for stage three LRT to Canada, Stitchville, and Barhaven, and whereas climate change is a concern that needs to be addressed by all levels of government. And whereas the National Capital Commission is currently studying the construction of a new bridge to connect Gatineau and Ottawa, and whereas a new bridge would likely induce an increase in vehicle traffic, therefore increasing emissions of greenhouse gas in our region, therefore be it resolved that Mayor Watson write to the Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, to request that the federal government prioritize investments in transformative and sustainable transit projects like stage three LRT to Canada, Stitchville and Barhaven and the STO tramway rather than a six bridge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Uh, our third motion is uh, Councillor Luloff. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Whereas the benefit of the STO electric tramway project is not being dis... Oh, no, this is Matt Fleury's. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chair. We'll get it on the screen there for you, Matt. Uh, no problem. I've got it right here. Excellent. That's what happens when you go through all the motions at the beginning, eh? They get all jumbled. Mm -hmm. Whereas the changing of the guard takes place on Parliament Hill every morning from late June to late July and has since July 2nd, 1959. And whereas the parade is a cherished tradition for the ceremonial guard, comprised of members of the Governor General's Foot Guards, the Canadian Grenadier Guards, and augmented by members of the Canadian Armed Forces from across Canada, and is an important event for our tourism industry. And whereas the parade leaves Cartier Square Drill Hall on Laurier Avenue West, and makes its way to Parliament Hill via the ceremonial route on Elgin Street and Wellington Street, and whereas the STO tram project proposes to use Wellington Street corridor uh, and to have a terminus station at Elgin and Queen Streets, which might create some challenges for this cherished event. And whereas the proposed terminus station is adjacent to the War Memorial, the site where tens of thousands gather on Remembrance Day. Therefore, be it resolved that STO be mandated to meaningfully consult as part of the next phase of this project with the Ceremonial Guard, the Department of National Defense and Veterans Affairs Canada, on the location of the terminus station at Elgin Street and Queen Street, as well as the preservation and coordination of the changing of the guard and its use of the ceremonial guards traditional routes along Elgin and Wellington Streets. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, uh, thank you, Councillor Luloff. Uh, on to the fourth and final, Councillor Fleury. Yes, Mr. President, uh, I'd ask members, I know that a number of copies were shared earlier, many have been amended, so we can, uh, this is the latest amendments here. Whereas the benefit of the STO electric tramway project is not being disputed as it would provide improvements for interprovincial transit customers, reduce the number of STO buses operating on Ottawa streets and help both cities reduce GHG emissions. And whereas the location of the STO tramway in the national capital must be carefully considered from all aspects not just cost as it will have a lasting impact for many generations and factor into the image of our capital city. And whereas the STO tramway option on the surface of Wellington Street has many issues still to be resolved with the federal government, including requirements of additional properties, consolidating of accesses and, fun and funding. And whereas of the two options presented by the STO tram tram report a below ground option would mitigate all issues associated with the surface option and allow city streets to evolve as future visions are consolidated and plans take shape and whereas the
Federation Boulevard, which includes Wellington Street, is Ottawa's most attractive route and is a strategic importance to the capital city in terms of design and its role in other significant plans, including the Rideau Wellington Sussex nodes, the Interprovincial Transit Loop Vision, the Alexandra Bridge reconstruction, and security of the parliament, parliamentary precinct. Therefore, be it resolved that City Council reaffirm to STO the importance of STO investments, including including seamless connection to the City of Ottawa's LRT investments, and be it further resolved that City Council encourage STO and the federal government to review and include a loop option facilitating transit connections between the City of Ottawa and the City of Gatineau's respective downtowns, and be it further resolved that should the federal government, NCC, pursue a detailed study of the interprovincial transit loop vision, that the City of Ottawa, including OC Trans, will participate in the study along with the City of Gatineau and STO, and be it further resolved that, this, that the City Council reiterates its current transit priorities to the federal government, and that any federal funding for the STO tram does not limit or impact federal funding for the City of Ottawa, for the City of Ottawa's transit priorities, such as Stage 3 LRT. Great. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Fleury. And as you mentioned, there, there was a little confusion uh, at first, uh, but uh, I'll get staff to confirm, but this is not technical in nature. This is more political in nature. Uh, previous versions kind of ran contrary to uh, the actual report. Uh, so it doesn't speak directly to the report. So uh, the loop is certainly worth studying, but we don't want to to stall anything out and I just ask staff to confirm that they are good with this uh, this motion as it stands. Yes, Chair, it's, it's as you described it. There's there's no technical uh, correlation to the report. Uh, the, the earlier versions, we, we had uh, challenges supporting that. Uh, I want to thank the Councillor for, uh, for floating that uh, by us earlier on. Uh, but this is, is purely political in terms of uh, there's no technical connection to the report and doesn't run against uh, our recommendations that are before you today. Great, thank you for that. So at this point, uh, we do have three delegations. Uh, so the first uh, delegation to speak today is David McRobbie. David, uh, you have five minutes, the floor is yours. Very good, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, my name is David McRobbie. I'm a principal architect with McRobbie Architects. Our office is located at 66 Queen Street in the heart of Ottawa's downtown core. For the past 30 years, our firm has been privileged to work with our engineering colleagues on the evolution of public transit in Ottawa and the region, including stations designed originally for the RMOC bus transitway, functional design and environmental assessment for the phase two Western extension of LRT from Tunney's Pasture to Canada, planning options for the Trillium South Line station at the airport, and station location planning of the future phase three extension of commuter rail west to Canada and south to Barhaven. I applaud the initiative taken by the STO to propose linking Gatineau and Ottawa with a tram, thereby increasing passenger capacity on public transit between sides of the river. That said, I believe that an enhanced vision to create a bi-directional loop encircling the Ottawa River Basin using the Portage Bridge and the Alexander Bridge, which is slated for replacement within 10 years, will provide a more efficient, lasting solution to mitigate the impact of the over 200,000 daily trips across the Ottawa River by commuters between Ottawa and Gatineau. Could I have slide one, please, Kelly? While I leave it to others to provide background on the benefits of the loop concept, I will limit my time to describe in urban design terms the vision behind the transformation of Wellington Street as a primary component of the loop into a world-class pedestrian and transit mall worthy of a G7 capital. Currently a congested thoroughfare for cars, trucks, buses, bicycles, and pedestrians during morning and afternoon commutes, Wellington Street is a facility that serves no one well. Removing car, truck, and bus traffic could showpiece 21st century technology for public transit while creating a spectacular and memorable urban experience and space for residents and visitors to our capital city. Our vision is of a shared pedestrian transit mall and cycling route that is shaded in summer and brightly lit in winter by an arcade of trees over its length. The Metcalf and O'Connor Street intersections could each feature urban scale, illuminated fountains, public art, sculptures, and other symbols of Canada and its capital. Could I have slide two, please?
As you see in this view towards Parliament Hill at the intersection of Wellington and Metcalf, Parliament rises behind uh, a, a new transit and pedestrian mall uh, with uh, LRT service, as you see, in both directions. And it is punctuated at center by uh, a, an urban event, a fountain, some other, uh, some other uh, techniques to be able to draw people towards this uh, attractive environment. Could I have slide three, please? The overview of planning of the mall is relatively simple, in fact, and it demonstrates the ability of the 30 meter or 100 original right of way to accommodate pedestrians, transit users and cyclists in a safe and secure environment while preserving the integrity of internal circulation with Parliament Hill. It has the benefit of also protecting the value of Canada's greatest asset, which is Parliament Hill from a security standard. And in fact, uh, uh, formalizes property to the south of side of Wellington Street for use, future use by the federal government, as you see in this slide. In conclusion, uh, I believe that we have an opportunity to create lasting value for urban environment by taking a bold step like the Wellington Mall as a key component of the Loop project. Thank, thank you for your attention. Tim, you're on mute. Oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, sorry, questions, uh, Councillor Hoobley. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I had my hand raised for questions of staff. No problem. Uh, Vice Chair Leeper. Uh, thanks, and uh, David, thank you very much for uh, showing us that. It's uh, it's compelling and it's, it's certainly very attractive. The key question I have is how does how does this tie into the city's efforts to reduce the number of STO buses um, on our city streets? Have you have you taken a look at how this can be a part of increasing uh, light rail capacity to get people over here? Well, I think this is focused on certainly on light rail. Unfortunately, because this is early days, we haven't had an opportunity to look at the at perhaps the broader uh, the broader context uh, as yet. But it, what it does is it basically amalgamates both systems between the STO and 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 the Ottawa systems uh, with a with a continuous loop that serves in both directions, and therefore can't help but relieve the congestion. Uh, the congestion and, and traffic on streets generally caused by buses and other uh, buses and other vehicles. And we see this as really the, uh, the way to be able to make this transfer of, of, uh, of people between both sides of the river seamless and uh, more easily connected to their to the existing systems. Okay. I'm not uh, sure that so. answered your question, but I'm, it, um, I'm I just want to want to see some sort of as this moves forward, I'm sure people are going to be kicking the tires on this for uh, for a long time to come. Yeah. Uh, you know, capacity is is probably my uh, most important consideration here, and I just want to understand what kind of capacity thinking has gone into uh, your proposal in terms of being able to get people over from Gatineau to Ottawa um, in sufficient volumes. As we go forward, it certainly would form a, a serious part of that. Uh, a serious part of that study. I'm not prepared uh, today, unfortunately, to to provide much more uh, word than that. Okay, thanks, Chair. Great. Uh, I don't see any other questions, but David, before I cut you loose, um, I just want to reiterate: uh, this is wonderful. I, I, I like seeing this, but uh, you know, if we want to convert Wellington Wellington into an urban mall, that's a whole other discussion. But as the report is in front of you today in regards to the tram, uh, are you in support of of that uh, that proposal? Well, we are because I think that it has initiated the discussion <laughs> primarily. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, it, any anything that can bring anything that can bring these sides of the rivers together, the river together, I think is a, is a benefit. Wonderful, great. Thank you very much. Great. Our next delegation is Lise Sarazen. Good morning. Bonjour. Uh, mon nom est Lise Sarazen. Je suis directrice générale. I'm the executive director of uh, the group of the Capitale. Of the National Capital Region. 
Mr. Chair, Councillor Tierney, Vice Chair, Councillor Leeper, members of the committee. Bonjour, Monsieur le Maire de Gatineau. Hello uh, to the Mayor of Gatineau. with adding uh, the element as, uh, as spoken by Mr. McGroby, so that the city of Ottawa works in co coordination with the NCC and SDAO to study the impact and benefits of creating an ad grade Ottawa Gatineau rail loop uh, corridor that crosses the Portage and Alexandria Bridge um, a tramway. Um, here's a few reasons why. Uh, obviously reducing traffic congestion uh, from both bridges. Um, we do know that there's many businesses that do business on both sides of the city. Uh, often uh, crossing one bridge to Gatineau and then going back to the other bridge and coming back to the downtown core. So obviously bringing uh, the downtown core to the Byward market uh, together. The idea also is to revive our downtown core, especially after the pandemic. Um, we know that there's going to be uh, major companies closing, um, office rentals are going to be open on both sides of the city. So this definitely brings uh, more in-depth destination between the two cities, going from one side to the other, using um, tourism as a destination, uh, adding and enhancing um, all of our, uh, increasing all of our um, participants to all museums, um, we're sure there's going to be many more businesses opening in this area. This loop will support any initiatives done by Le Breton Platt, again, supporting economic development and growth to both of our cities. Um, this will increase the numbers of visitors to our top destination, restaurants. Um, we know there's going to be new, uh, new uh, festivals, most likely cultural events that will link both of our cities together. This is the appropriate time for Ottawa and Gatineau to really acclaim our national capital region as an interna international destination. This loop will provide this, will provide uh, enhancement to all of our advertising on both sides of the city to a one major destination. As you most likely know, La Chambre de Commerce de Gatineau. The Gatineau and Chamber of Commerce. Are also friends of this loop. We have spoken and we all support it. Let's not forget Acobia, who's a major participant uh, in this loop here. Um, you've heard um, Mr. McKenna, who's in favor of uh, studying this, uh, this project, as well as the uh, NCC's chief executive, who has a very serious interest in this loop. So we are here today to make a bold statement. Pour léguer un héritage à nos enfants. To uh, leave uh, something for our children, to make a difference, and uh, to link Ottawa and Gatineau, to make of this uh, a green and international region. Thank you for having given me this time to speak to you. Merci, Lise. Uh, questions? Thank you, Lise. Uh, Fleury. Thank you, Lise. Thank you for your presentation. And hi. It's a pleasure to see you here today. As you know, the city and the STO did its study and presented two options. That is the uh, subterranean a connection at Sparks. Um, in the past few weeks, the STO uh, did a campaign with regards to the financial implications of that option. And the other option is the Wellington Corridor. How do you foresee the next steps? I'm not convinced that the idea of the loop uh, and the Wellington, the idea of the loop and Wellington are, co are well coordinated. If we look at technology and the approach. So what's your point of view on this? It's clear that we have to make further studies in order to determine what is the greenest option, the most energy efficient option. We know that uh, in uh, years to come, the fact of, uh, we, we know that Wellington should be, should be closed to cars for security reasons. That's one reason. And then the Alexandra Bridge will be rebuilt in the next few years as well. So our thinking is that we should do a study, and I'm sure that um, Mr. Plamondon will speak to this in further detail, is to do a study on what 
is the most uh, economical option, but also how we can join together all collaborative uh, all the interveners, the city of Ottawa, Gatineau, the STO, uh, the federal government, all stakeholders, how to uh, shape this project. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yes, I do agree. Thank you. Merci. Um, Thank you. Oh, I just saw oh, a hand went down there. I don't think I see any other questions for the delegation. So, merci encore, Lise. Uh, next up, uh, Thank you, our Lise. third delegation is Bob Plamondon. an idea that would fundamentally transform our G7 capital city and our national capital region. It's an idea that can be achieved without ask, asking Ottawa taxpayers for a capital investment or to forego other transit projects and opportunities. I'm here today representing the supporters of the loop. We are citizens who want a greener capital, a capital that delivers an exceptional experience and function to residents and visitors alike on both sides of the Ottawa River, a capital that works better for people with disabilities. We support a vision that will link Ottawa and Gatineau transit system and that ties together the major nation building institutions in Ottawa and Gatineau that surround Confederation Boulevard. Think of the parliamentary precinct, Major Hills Park, Byward Market, the National Gallery, the Mint, Nepean Point, Museum of History, Jacques Cartier Park, the Chaudière Falls and surrounding islands, the War Museum, Le Breton Flats, Library and Archives Canada, the Supreme Court, all the institutions along Confederation Boulevard. As a national project, the loop would be 100% federally funded and would not touch established and ongoing federal, provincial, municipal infrastructure funding. Even though the loop would likely be integrated with the STO Gatineau transit system, it would be paid for in the same way as the National Gallery and the Canadian Museum of History came into being as national institutions. The loop idea is not new, but its time has come. It enhances the capital realm. It addresses critical and growing concerns around national security that cannot be ignored. It links the major workplaces of the federal government, adding convenient access to people from Ottawa to Place de Portage and Terrasse de la Chaudière. It augments interprovincial transportation and it aligns with the pressing need to replace the Alexandra Bridge. To meet these federal purposes and attract federal investment, the natural choice is the Wellington Street surface option that crosses both the Portage and Alexandra bridges and continues along Confederation Boulevard. The tunnel option by contrast does not connect the major landmark or address the national security considerations and the added cost of a tunnel may kill the project altogether. In fact, it is only a loop that brings 100% federal funding to the table which lessens the capital cost of the STO project and increases the likelihood of the national capital region achieving a more integrated transit system. The loop has attracted the support of four former mayors en anglais et en français and a growing number of community and business leaders. On Saturday, I spoke with John Ruddy, who told me, who signed on as a supporter of the loop, which I'm pleased to announce this morning. For the people of Ottawa, the loop offers significant benefits and at no cost. There could be even be operating cost savings if the ownership of Wellington Street is transferred to the NCC. For those who live here and work on the Quebec side of the border, the loop provides a convenient public transit connection. If you live here and you want to get to our national museums or Jacques Cartier Park for, Lino, or for Winterlude, Ottawa, Ottawans would gain a public transit option. And it is not a question, in my opinion, of a loop versus say phase three of LRT. The funding of both projects would come from independent sources. And the loop is not something that can be easily appended as an afterthought to a transit stub on Wellington Street at Elgin. The loop is a single federal project that would be completed under one vision, one plan, and perhaps in multiple phases. So as the NCC looks at the loop option, as the RCMP considers security issues, as the federal government plans the replacement of the Alexandra Bridge, it is important to have on the record a formal indication from city council that it believes the loop is worthy of study and consideration 
That is why we are here this morning, approving the two options in the proposed uh, motion without reference to the loop will hamper our efforts as supporters of the loop to advocate for 100% federal funding. While staff cooperation with an NCC study might not technically require a council resolution, I encourage this committee to send a formal signal through a motion to the effect that the city staff work in coordination with the NCC, the Government of Canada and the STO to study the impact and benefits of creating an Ottawa Gatineau rail loop corridor that crosses the Portage and Alexandra bridges. Thank you. Well, you had two seconds left there, Bob. Good job. Um, <laughs> uh, on the board, uh, we go to committee members first. So we have Councillor Dudas, Councillor Fleury, and then Councillor McKenney. Councillor Dudas. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Bob, I just I wanted to thank you. I think that this is a, a wonderful vision uh, that you and your, your peers have brought forward for uh, not just the city of Ottawa, but as you said, the national capital region to consider. Um, I think your timing is apt. Uh, you know, at the last transit committee, uh, there was a lot of concerns, discussions, questions about what a segment of, of a tramway would look like, how it would serve not just uh, certain, certain residents and certain commuters, but how it would serve the greater good of the community um, and the greater good of the national capital region, including our businesses. And Bob, I, I think that my question to you is, you know, once again, you've emphasized the need of our federal partners uh, contributing, not just financially, but their thoughts, their visions. And I'd like to, you, you've given a bit of an idea as to how you can see this unfolding. Do you also have an idea as to uh, timelines? Now, once again, you, you brought a vision to us, and this seems like a very long initiative that I think, once again, we should endorse. I would like to know what you see unfolding. Would you see that it would come together in pieces? Uh, how would it, would it be one hit in terms of building it on, on mass? Like, what is your vision in terms of how you would see it building out? So... Our objective in forming the supporters of the loop um, was to advocate for and to realize uh, the beginning of a study, a study that would look at all of these options in terms of, of, uh, of, of the route, um, uh, you know, of the phasing of the project, uh, of the funding and the governance around the project to, to launch a study. So as you, as you talk about you know, what this vision is for, and it's, and it's not just for this generation, it's for the next 100 years. Um, and it's a rare opportunity to do this right um, uh, and not to do a project that falls short of fulfilling all of the benefits. But you know, if you're asking me, we, we've met, been meeting for over a year um, looking at all of the questions that you just asked, looking at roots. And we didn't want to get, you know, um, drawn into the details. We wanted to really to articulate a, a vision um, for what this could be. Um, and in, and in, you know, more direct answer to your question, and it's something that I referred to in, in my report, is it, this isn't something that is an add-on later on. This will only be realized, I believe, if it's treated as one project from, from the beginning at the design phase and at and, and when we're looking at funding, when we're looking at governance, that as one project that can, could have multiple phases, you know, you could begin with um, the the direct connection of the Ottawa and Gatineau transit systems um, in phase one of this project, and then continue along Confederation Boulevard and extend it um, across Alexandra Bridge as the construction of that bridge is undertaken. But in all aspects of the design consideration should be given to how this ultimately would be integrated into one single project that completes Confederation Boulevard. Thank you very much, Bob. Great. Uh, so looking back at the board, more hands started flying up. So we have to go to committee members first. So Councillor Fleury, followed by Councillor Hoobly, then Councillor McKenney and Councillor Brockington. Yes, Mr. President. Good morning, Bob. Good to see you. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time and, and thanks for uh, igniting the capital hopes uh, that you've done uh, when, when uh, since the end, since the, uh, the city of Gatineau and the STO uh, did the briefing back in May. Um, you're a former NCC board member. So I, I, I come with I, I, my questions really relate to your expertise in that front or your interest in that front. Um, how do you see this project? 
tie, coming together. I sort of struggle. We have a report today, Spark Street or Wellington with a stub. As you know, I'm uncomfortable with the stub element, and and but obviously I, I, I value the loop. I, I think the loop would be something uh, that's been discussed, something that's uh, a window of opportunity. Can you can you be clear? And, and I mean, you you know the federal realm better than I do. Um, how do you see uh, the STO and C of Gatineau's request come in, and how do you see that take shape within the federal uh, partner circle? So, um, so it is correct that you know I uh, did serve on the uh, the NCC board and chaired a committee and was interim chair actually for a short period of time. Um, I was deeply involved in the 50-year plan that the that the NCC put forward. Um, and the animation of Confederation Boulevard was part of the NCC's 50 year plan. This is something that over my entire term on the board, and if you go back to the, the time that Jackie Holtzman even was on the board before me, um, this was an option, this was an idea, this was a vision that had been articulated. So, so this is not something that is, that is new to the NCC. Um, what we have, I, I, I think, um, you know, are, are three elements. Um, one is just a confluence of circumstances that are coming together to, to really energize and animate and, and gain champions for this particular project. Um, we've had these wonderful renderings uh, that David McRoby's uh, team produced that really has excited the entire community around you know, what could be. Um, and, and so it's attracted a lot of support. Um, and the NCC itself um, you know, behind the scenes, even when I was on the board, and I think even after the fact with my discussion with board members and, and the NCC chair, you know, have been looking at this uh, behind the scenes as a, as a possibility, particularly as they've been looking at an, a new interprovincial bridge crossing, uh, that, that's something they've been mandated to do, and as they've been preparing for the, uh, the entry of Gatineau's uh, transit system into Ottawa. So what I see as the, as the next steps um, is the NCC taking the lead on a study, bringing together all of the various partners and stakeholders, including Indigenous communities, to examine uh, the impacts and the benefits uh, that a loop would provide relative to um, what is realized under the other two options that, that uh, have been brought forward to this committee today. So, you know, I think all of the options remain on the table. What I'm hopeful today from this committee is to get an endorsement to include or, or, or uh, to, uh, to support the NCC and its work by sending a signal to staff and to OC Transpo. And in fact, sending a signal from this committee to the federal government that this is something the city is interested in. As the federal government looks at its capital planning, um, and the capital realm, these are things that happen over a 10 year time frame. Um, so the decisions you make today, you know, I think uh, have an impact on the central agencies of the federal government to say to the RCMP, to PSPC, to the NCC, to the Department of Finance, that this is something that they need to put on the radar screen as a possibility. So I see the NCC really taking, uh, taking a lead, but working in partnership with STO, with the city of Gatineau, with the city of Ottawa, and other federal departments and agencies. I, I can appreciate that, and, and I, I want to be cognizant of everyone's time, so if, if the response can be uh, direct. The, how do you see the report uh, with the STO study not advance too far that the NCC's review of it uh, doesn't, uh, isn't too late? That, that's my fear, is that um, you know, the STO and city of Gatineau seem to be quite advanced with their, with their, uh, their two analysis here. And how do you see that being coordinated and, and not, uh, not, uh, not advance too far and then trip up on the technology or the, the actual connections? So, I mean, that's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason the timing for the formation of, of our supporters of the loop. Um, the NCC has done work already on this project behind the scenes. So um, I, I think the timing is good. Um, I'm encouraged uh, to hear reports. Uh, Mayor Pedon Jobin is is here with us this morning. I'm, I'm encouraged when I see reports from uh, from Gatineau and even from the Minister of Transport in Quebec um, uh, that are breathing, as as I say, some life into this project. So I see the timing as good, and um, that the NCC would be able to to begin the study uh, in fairly short order. 
Okay. And just finally, do you feel that the motion that I presented there reflects kind of the, the position on the loop just to make sure that uh, committee members hear that? Yes, I, um, the motion that you read out this morning, I think is uh, very consistent with the goals that the supporters of the, of the loop have put forward. Thank you. Great, uh, Councillor Hoodley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Bob. Good to see you again. Good morning, Alan. Councillor. Uh, a couple of questions for you with this. Uh, one of the concerns I have is who's going to pick up the additional costs that uh, will come to the city of Ottawa? And that would be, for example, on Wellington, uh, as you know, there's a lot of tour buses that line up up and down uh, Wellington. They're going to have to be moved somewhere else. Does that mean the city of Ottawa taxpayers will have to pay to reconfigure another street to handle the, the traffic and so on from there? Has your group given any consideration to these additional costs? So again, this would be something that would be uh, reviewed in the course of a, of a study. I think all of the uh, consequential impacts on, the, uh, on transit, transportation, uh, on tourism, on things such as the um, changing of the guard, on Remembrance Day, all of these things would be, would be looked at at the study. I, I actually think that there's an opportunity for the City of Ottawa to save money and save costs. You know, for example, by transferring ownership of Wellington Street to the NCC, let give them the uh, the operating cost burden and 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 whatever uh, issues that 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 arise. Um, this 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 street, I would I would say, is necessarily uh, best uh, in federal hands, particularly for the security issues that the RCMP is responsible for. I know that Senate and other parliamentary committees have been have been looking at this issue, you know, and their their prediction is that, you know, much like Pennsylvania Avenue was closed off to traffic, that Wellington Street for security reasons would be need to clo be closed off to to traffic. You've got five ton trucks uh, today um, that are within 10 meters of the prime minister's office in East Block and West Block. So, at, at, you know, to your question, I see this as an opportunity for the city of Ottawa to download responsibility for some of the costs associated with, with security um, and the infrastructure in front of Wellington Street. Thank you. I, I actually admire your optimism on this, uh, that it could be a very positive thing. One more question for you. You were very involved with the naming of the Sir John A. Macdonald Parkway. Uh, with the uh, tram coming across uh, the bridge there, basically making the parkway a dead end, how do you see the impacts there? Because you mentioned earlier about uh, phase three LRT not being part of the consideration here. I have to respectfully disagree with you on that because if we don't have phase three, uh, all the volume of traffic that is on that Sir John A. Um, McDonald Parkway now has to go somewhere else until there's a phase three that's built that they'll have an LRT option to get them into the core. So uh, it, did you give any thought to that or are you hoping that that all gets resolved within that study? So uh, Councillor, you know, as you may know, I am a big advocate of LRT in Ottawa and had a lot to do with the the rooting of phase two of LRT resolving, you know, a pretty significant dispute. I'm a big supporter of phase three of LRT. My point in my presentation was that the funding for phase three of LRT would come out of a separate pot of money. It would come out of infrastructure money that's subject to joint federal, provincial, municipal agreements. That comes out of a separate pot of money than what would the federal government would use to fund uh, the loop, the confederation loop that falls within um, the, the federal realm and that offers significant benefits to the um, uh, to federal public servants. And it's and it's essentially a nation building initiative that should not be cost burdened onto the city of Ottawa or, or, or city of Gatineau. As to the traffic that comes in along the, you know, the Sir John A. Macdonald Parkway and, and into the downtown, and how that integrates into into Wellington Street, and how it integrates with the uh, with 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 the um, Gatineau's tram system, which would happen under any of the three options. If there's three options on the table, that issue has to be resolved. 
Um, but that flow of traffic into downtown with additional capacity on Albert and Slater Street uh, associated with, um, with Ottawa's LRT system, depending on what you do with Spark Street, these are all matters that would be reviewed in the course of the, of the study. So, you know, I, I think you know, that, that's all the more reason why we want this study to be endorsed by, by City Council and for there to be um, fairly you know, quick action on, on moving it forward. Okay, thank you. And uh, as I said, always good to see you. So thanks for coming out today. It's thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a pleasure Great. to be here. Councillor McKenney. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Bob and uh, David before you for, um, for the presentations. Um, Wellington Street is in the ward that I represent and I'm quite uh, interested in um, a few things on Wellington. One is obviously interprovincial transit. I think it's I think it's absolutely critical uh, in order to, to build a national capital region and in order to ensure that we have uh, an ongoing and we continue to grow into uh, um, you know, a, a new modern city. And uh, the idea of a confederation loop you know, we've, has been bandied about in the past. I've had conversations about it, uh, different BIAs that I sit on uh, in that area uh, with the NCC. And I, and I fully support the, the notion of, of a loop. I think that, uh, I think you're correct uh, in terms of not just uh, commuter traffic, uh, which we often, you know, consider first, which is fine around our transit, but, you know, bringing people to, uh, to both sides of the river, uh, giving people those short rides and, and the opportunity for, for uh, you know, just connecting um, residents and visitors uh, and people who work downtown to to that entire corridor, I think is 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 key. I want to see a car-free Wellington. I'm going to put that on the table today. I think that as a as a modern city, we've got to we have got to commit to taking vehicular traffic off of Wellington. I would say, you know, after uh, from Bank to Elgin is is absolutely key. We have to figure out how we mitigate traffic in the, the rest of the downtown as a result. We can't have traffic, interprovincial traffic going in, you know, down Booth Street or any of our residential streets, uh, but we certainly have uh, a lot of capacity on um, those highways that we built through our city years ago, Lyon and, uh, and Kent. So we've got, we've got essential highways running through our downtown that, uh, that have uh, a lot of capacity for vehicular traffic. So I just want to put that out, support it. I want to ask you, and I, I hope it's fair to ask you, I think that you know, you're bringing us a vision and I'm going to ask you for, for a little bit of detail, but um, staff mentioned, Bob, that in their opinion, uh, neither corridor option put forward today would pre preclude a future loop. Do you agree with that? So, um... I think the option that is most consistent with uh, the closure of traffic on Wellington Street, as you, as you have uh, advocated, um, uh, that supports uh, a true Confederation Boulevard is the, um, the Wellington Street at grade option as compared with the tunnel. I think if you had the tunnel that you would be now looking at the loop um, as a completely discrete project and you would not be taking advantage of the opportunities and the investments that you know are already made coming across Portage Bridge, um, and and along Wellington Street. So I, I just think there's there's an opportunity to merge these ideas in a very cost-effective uh, and, and efficient way. Um, my concern about about approving, let's say, for example, just the uh, Wellington Street option that ends at a stub on. On, on Elgin Street um, is that it becomes that much more difficult to, uh, to reach the promised land <laughs> effectively of, of the loop of, you now have a certain amount of, uh, of energy in the community, uh, you know, planning resources being put to bear, um, the investments of the federal government, the Alexandra Bridge, I think just now is the time to do this as one project rather than to do it piecemeal in, in, as two different, two different projects. I think the risk of the loop never uh, coming to be is greater if, if we only look at this as a project that, that first gets us to Elgin Street and then we'll see what happens after that. 
Okay, so just so I'm clear though, so you're not advocating for either. What you're saying to us is take a pause, think about how we can integrate a loop into transit on both sides of the river and come back or ask ask the NCC to come back with that. Is it so, so I think, well, I think it would be a bit bold for us to say to take a pause. Um, I, I think, you know, you've got two options on the table this morning with the, the, the staff motion. Um, and I think now there's a third option. And, and I think if, you know, if I'm doing planning, I would continue to look at all three options to look at the costs and benefits of the three and what they uh, deliver to, uh, to the residents of Ottawa, to the national capital region and to the country as a whole. And, and continue to look at those three options. And, and then, you know, the, the, the business case, the inspirational case, um, you know, will be available for you to, uh, to examine. But we at least want to get the, the City of Ottawa's endorsement for, to study the, the loop option. Okay. Um, and just one last question. Have, have, do you have any formal, um, have you had formal discussions with and do you have any formal um, support from uh, Minister McKenna or MP uh, Fergus on the other side of the river. So, as I mentioned, we, we have been meeting, uh, you know, our group, which is a, a you know a growing group for uh, for over a year, looking at the uh, at the various options. Originally, I had proposed, you know, to your point earlier, in an op-ed in the Ottawa Citizen about turning Wellington Street into a pedestrian mall, and then. Uh, that got a lot of interest, in, and but not enough to get over the hump. I needed more champions, and then this, then this other idea came forward about about uh, integrating the uh, the Gatineau tram option. So I would say that we have had numerous discussions with federal, provincial, municipal officials, uh, current current office holders, and 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 past office holders. Um, and there have been public declarations, I think, has been referred to in some of the earlier comments, I think, from Lee Salazin has mentioned about uh, Minister McKenna speaking favorably, uh, you know, about this. Uh, you know, Greg Fergus certainly has been speaking favorable, uh, uh, favorably about this, you know, have, have, as have many others. In fact, um, every, every single person that we have reached out to has been supportive of this concept. Uh, at least studying the concept. So we're not feeling resistance. We're only feeling encouragement, um, including from decision makers and those that have influence over how the public purse is, is allocated and spent. Okay. And just one last question. So you would see the loop then as, um, as combining both kind of visions for Wellington Street, pedestrianizing it and um, connecting through a loop. Um, on both sides of the river. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. And we, and we do have, you know, website and social media, transitloop.ca um, mm -hmm. shows our options for routes. They've got the wonderful renderings from David McRoby, the benefits listed, um, the news feeds that have happened and, and, and other endorsements. So, um, yeah. so yes, that, that's, that's our, that's the vision that, you know, that we see for, for the next hundred years. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Brockington. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. Um, can you tell me and the committee the advantages of the tram proposal versus an electric powered articulated bus that ran every five minutes? You can still have a clean bus. You don't have to spend $3.5 billion. And if the goal is to connect people from both sides of the river, you can do it with an e-bus. So why why is a tram, why would you support a tram proposal over let's say an e-bus proposal? What, what makes this the best or the most optimal proposal? Um, so if, if, the, if the question is to me, you're, you're going to quickly exceed my level of technical expertise. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I, 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 could, I would say this, that our group are supporters of the loop. Um, and so that is the principal objective that we have. Um, we are tying into an existing uh, vision and project that uh, Gatineau uh, has endorsed and the city of Gatineau and STO have come forward with, which is a tram. 
Um, and we see the loop, uh, actually the advantages of, of a loop is it's something that is continuous so that you could get on at Elmer, um, you know, come right downtown without having necessarily to have a transit stop to get off of one mode of transportation and onto another. So, I mean, that's the, the logical benefit of not having, you know, two different uh, systems, just, just functionally. I don't think you, you have to be a technical expert to say that. Um, but to your point, Councillor, I mean, you know, there is no technical reason why you couldn't have um, a, a multimodal type uh, system. Uh, again, I think the study would 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 look at uh, uh, would look at what you're proposing, which is you know is a all tram option the best uh, way to go, or or there might there be other uh, modes of of creating the loop, including um, you know an all electric bus as as an option. So I think this this the study would uh, would look at that. I would point out. Um, even though uh, David McRoby's wonderful renderings do show uh, overhead wires on Wellington Street, that um, the actual proposal from the STO Gatineau is that the, the, the buses or the, the tram would be powered uh, through, through, through batteries, at least during that particular phase uh, of, the, um, uh, you know, of the loop to, to minimize uh, overhead wires. So um, it can be battery powered uh, or it could be electrified through uh, cables, or as you say, you know, there may be another option of of having it as as buses. But this is something that I think the study the study would look at. And do you see the Alexandra Bridge as integral to the city's the two cities loop network? Yes, I think the Alexandra Bridge is one of the one of the three drivers of this. We are, you know, it is now the NCC is doing public consultations on the replacement of the uh, of that bridge um, and now is the time to think about how how to integrate public transit into that um, into that bridge and and we you know when we're you know i'm an economist at heart and i mean you know a writer and consultant um, you know among uh, among other things when you're look doing a business case on this for example in the alexandra bridge and you look at the the incremental cost of adding public transit versus you know the the you know a uh, for a for a new bridge, the in, incremental cost is is relatively modest than if you had to take an existing bridge and convert it into a public transit Absolutely. link. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. So the advantages are there. You know, if not now, we'll you know we'll never have this confluence of circumstances come together at one point again. I just completed my survey last week, and I said you've got to make room for the tram or a train because without that, then that bridge to me is is not. Mr. Chell, just say I thank the presenter. I think his his comment about, you know, Wellington Street being taken over by the federal government, I think, is an interesting suggestion. Something that I think needs additional thought. There's a number of reasons why that makes sense, and I really like the suggestion that all three proposals should go through a cost-benefit analysis. If the city is going to endorse this project, in theory, I think you need to keep all options on the table and get a really detailed analysis of all three. This is a major decision. And so I think we need as much information as we get. But thank you, Mr. Chair, and to the delegates. And our final uh, questions coming from Councillor Kavanaugh. Thank you. Um, thank you, Bob, for your presentation. Um, one of the things that um, I, I find attractive about it is having um, it open in front of Parliament after working there for 30 years. Um, I don't know how many times I've crossed that street going to committee meetings, but it would be better to have no traffic there. Um, but along with um, Councillor Ubley, uh, I'm, I really want to know if the studies have been done to prove that um, people who are heading west, because not everybody works downtown, they're heading west to go to high tech out in Canada and other places, and they fill the parkway. Um, I want to make sure that the study has been done to prove that these um, these people are going to take transit um, as well. I mean, it's nice to have that loop, and it's very touristy, and it's it's great. I like it, but I, I also want to make sure that that part has been looked at because uh, it's not just about downtown. Do you have any comments on that? So, uh, you know, so my only comment is, is you know, I think the study that the uh, the NCC would undertake 
um, would have a, a, a broad mandate um, and look at all of the consequential impacts of uh, what the loop would, would mean, not just for the downtown core, um, but for the national capital region as a whole, no matter where you live. Uh, and I think that would, that would that's my sense um, from, from speaking with the, uh, the NCC, um, that, that that would be part of their, uh, of their remit as they, uh, as they look at uh, uh, the various options for integrating Ottawa Gatineau Transit and enhancing the capital realm. Hey, thank you. I also want to make sure that cycling is not forgotten, um, that, um, uh, it, that that it's not compromised. Is that being taken into consideration? Luke? Um, and you, you can see from the, the rendering that David McGroby has produced, there is uh, cycling um, on Wellington Street. The only thing that we know just in our conversations as a, as a committee that this would not be um, you know, for high-speed cycling, uh, this this would be uh, for a relatively slow pedestrian speed type cycling. So that cycling would we certainly have um, access to it, and cycling would be promoted on on Wellington Street, but in a very safe and 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 cautious way. Well, good luck because um, working with the parliamentary precinct will be will be interesting. Um, I don't know how you're going to get those um, tourist buses off the road because that's actually one of the biggest hazards on Wellington right now um, in terms for for cyclists for for everybody um, and I don't know how your how that plan works but uh, I think that's actually one of the biggest problems noted all right thank you thank you Great. Uh, thank you Bob I'm looking at the board I uh, don't see any other questions for yourself so that ends the delegation component uh, of our conversation here at committee today. Uh, but before I start going to the board for questions to staff, uh, John, it seems like uh, the last few uh, delegations, we've been speaking a lot about uh, everything but the report. Uh, great vision for the loop, uh, a lot of great ideas. What you've heard today, how can you uh, envision what we could do as a city if we were to go down that kind of road? Thank you, Chair. Um, just listening to the speakers and certainly following this in the last couple of weeks, um, my recommendation uh, to, to help committee uh, today would be, our advice would be that you, uh, you approve the staff report so that you're dealing with the matter that's before you today. Um, and, and that enables um, STO, OC Transplant, everybody to continue to work together with integrated transit uh, between both jurisdictions. And it's great that we, we're all saying that. Um, so the next question becomes, if the vision that you're seeing, and there's great drawings and, and great dialogue about connecting further connections, uh, how do you move forward on that vision? And how do you stay focused on what are the council priorities on, on the Ottawa side of things? So my recommendation in the spirit of trying to help through this is, approve the staff report, then I would encourage someone to move a recommendation that you direct staff to um, include in the TMP, which is underway now. Um, and this unlocks what Mr. Plumadon is talking about. How do, you, how do you keep the vision alive and how do you move it and study it? And again, it's great to hear that everybody understands the complexity of that. Uh, I should say the report does not preclude the loop in any way. Uh, so if you report, uh, approve the, the report, you're not compromising the vision of the loop. And I think it's more than the loop. I think, uh, as Mr. McRobbery showed those great pictures, you could direct staff to do two things. Uh, a study on the loop that is 100% funded by the federal government, both in the study and in the build and in the operation of it. I would be that specific on it. I would take it a step further if you want the vision to be even bolder. You could also direct staff uh, to direct the federal government to fund uh, a vision for what the Wellington Street looks like. Is Are we converting that to a pedestrian mall? Are we converting that to a precinct very much like other cities and so forth? So that could be in the TMP with the conditions of federal funding, as Mr. Plamadon talked about. And I would also put in that motion that you reinforce your priorities are stage three for funding when it comes to provincial and, and federal funding. So that way you have, yeah, you continue with your mission on stage three. You uh, have a vision for the future on the loop that seems to be, um, you know, I don't know if everyone's endorsing that or not, but if that's what you want. And you move forward on a very important project 
uh, with STO in, in terms of uh, the staff report and the recommendation that's before you. Great, thanks for that, John. Uh, we'll go to the board. Uh, we got uh, Councillor Luloff, followed by Councillor Fleury, Leeper, and Dudas, and who? I first want to express my appreciation for uh, Mayor Pednoja by being here today uh, to, to listen to this. I think that it's um, really becoming of you to 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 have uh, um, you know a hand in, in this discussion and to and to hear what what Ottawa City Council has to say. Um, I'd also uh, like to uh, thank your transportation chair, your transit chair of STO, for engaging with us on this project. I think that we had some fruitful discussions. Um, I will be voting for this staff report, um, but I do feel that uh, I need to say that, you know, while uh, my motion will address some of the concerns uh, that I have about the Wellington Street option, it does not uh, really address them all. Um, I am uh, worried uh, about placing tram tracks on Wellington Street. Um, this is a very important vista um, for the city of Ottawa. It is probably the most iconic vista that we have in the city. Um, I do like seeing in the, tra in, the, in the staff report that we are going to do everything we can to ensure that um, you know, traffic can still use uh, Wellington Street when you know, we have guests come into town from all over the, from all over the country, especially during Christmas time uh, when uh, the Parliament buildings are, are lit up, it's gorgeous, and it's always uh, a nice uh, drive by to, to show uh, res or uh, people that are visiting uh, the city. Um, and, I, and I do really worry about losing that vista um, and the safety issues that are concerned with ensuring that the ceremonial guard can uh, continue using uh, Parliament Hill to do the, uh, the change of the guard as well as um, Fortissimo, which happens at the end of their season. Uh, this is something that we really value and that we really cherish and is a part of you know, our city's history, our national history, and our military history. Um, so I will be supporting this report, um, but I definitely want to ensure that uh, I'm expressing my strong support um, for the Spark Street Tunnel. Uh, I do want to see Spark Street uh, revitalized, and I think that having you know, thousands of people get off on Spark Street will be great for, for business on Spark Street. Uh, and we'll also shift the focus to, to revitalizing this very, very important piece of our downtown that, uh, you know, frankly, over the years uh, has been really underused. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to share my comments, uh, Mr. Turney. Uh, again, I will support the staff report, but I really want to see a focus uh, on the Spark Street Tunnel. You know, the city of Ottawa and the province of Ontario uh, and uh, the government of Canada spent billions of dollars uh, putting our LRT uh, underground. I don't want all that effort to be wasted now by, you know, placing um, a tram uh, where we could have run the, where we could have run the LRT in the first place. We did quite a bit of work uh, to, to move that infrastructure underground uh, so as to not disturb, um, you, know, um, you know, emergency operations on Wellington Street um, to ensure that we can continue to have traffic running east and west uh, along that really uh, important vista. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Luloff. Councillor Fleury. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my questions are to, uh, to Vivian and John particularly. Um, so, so I wanna understand um, in the report, uh, there's a number of studies that the federal government has undertaken uh, that it be the Wellington, Rideau, Colonel Bice, no, the bi-directional lane along Wellington, the Alexandra Bridge. What other studies are happening in the federal precinct that would could have influence on this? Uh, and have we gotten feedback from those stakeholders as part of our, our report preparation? Um. Yeah, you've, uh, Councillor, you've identified the key uh, studies there, although the uh, Rideau Sussex node is actually a um, City of Ottawa-led project with involvement of the NCC. The NCC is working with us on the joint um, bi-directional bike lanes on Wellington. Um, through the STO study, uh, PSPC are looking at uh, the longer term plans for the uh, judicial uh, precincts and what they want to do there. So they haven't started that study, so we, we don't have any 
uh, information on that. But uh, for this area, I think you've touched on all of the uh, important studies that are underway. There, uh, there, there's rumors, and I guess these are in secret Senate committees and, and PSPC parliamentary precinct stuff, but there is rumors that the federal government was looking to close Wellington in the near future. Is that information that you were made aware of or that you're, uh, you're privy to? Well, I think um, there's always a, a review of the security measures around uh, the uh, offices, the buildings in this area. Um, so, of course, uh, closing down traffic would be an option, but they, that work is still underway. Um, so, otherwise, this STO study would not have proposed um, traffic uh, being carried through all the way along Wellington. Okay. And although I support... Um... My colleague and neighbor, uh, Councillor McKinney's point around pedestrianization, can you be, maybe speak to the report? Because I know Ecology Ottawa tweeted earlier this week that the well, or last week, that the Wellington option was the option to pedestrianize Wellington. And although I, I think that to be very uh, desirable, I, I didn't see that in the report. So can you speak to uh, the design elements of Wellington that were discussed? And if in your mind, or, or, or where in the report it spoke to, uh, the removal of, of cars, because I, I think, to my, from my perspective, that's, uh, that's not been reflected in the report. Oh, that was actually brought up in uh, September. And the two options on Wellington are to, one is to maintain traffic all along the entire stretch. So it's one lane per direction and turning movements would be restricted. Turning lanes would be removed in order to make the space for uh, the tramway. So that's the option that uh, is in the report um, in front of you today. So it's a Wellington with traffic. The other sub -op option along Wellington is no traffic east of Bank Street. So between Bank and Elgin, there would be no traffic permitted there. So all the ve vehicles would turn onto um, Bank Street. Now in both uh, options of Wellington, cycling and sidewalks uh, for pedestrians are there. Of course, the one that removes uh, traffic east of Bank would have more space for uh, wider sidewalks um, and, and you know, improved uh, cycling designs through that segment. Um, and then, um, yeah, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that is a thing to consider that the, this, this committee might want to, to strike a position on the, uh, the desirability of the public realm along Wellington uh, as it is, as it forms recommendation three. Um, the, the loop question, you and I have had uh, countless discussions over the last week on the report and, and the loop itself. I, I wonder how, if you can express the, um, you and I have talked about the technology challenges. So if Wellington was to proceed with a stub at the end of the route, what would be in from a from your expertise in transportation planning? Uh, what would be the limitations to all of a sudden think of a phase two of that without a, a comprehensive review in the first place? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the current SEO study talks about a streetcar type technology, so tramway, uh, but it in its own uh, dedicated lane. So it's to work with. Um, at grade with intersections, people get on, people get off the tram. And it's probably a vehicle size that would be suitable for the commuting uh, demand from the Western end. So, um, you know, so these things will have to be worked out, but, um, but given the, um, how the vehicle size and how they choose it, then any um, curves would be dictated by that type of technology, that vehicle design. So there are some tight curves along Wellington to turn um, up onto Sussex, if we were to talk about the loop. So that's a, a technical thing to consider. I mean, the study hasn't taken place, but I would point out that's a consideration. Um, so if it's a longer vehicle, then you need to have a, a wider curve. If they're smaller vehicles that uh, are more frequent in terms of uh, passing by um, for passengers, then it's, it's a different design. So this, these are very important things to consider when the study takes place. 
I think those are very good points. Uh, I, I would highlight to committee that, you know, that's where it leaves the Wellington stub as a, a really uh, with a lot of concern to us that this would proceed through the federal review without the key, uh, the key elements that, uh, that were highlighted by, by our city professionals. Um, Mr. Chair, I do have the motion on the floor and uh, Mr. Manconi did raise a number of recommendation which I think would, would be best suited in to be added to my motion. I'm certainly comfortable in adding what I believe he said, which was to uh, include it in our TMP and then study uh, that the feds would pay for the study, the build and the operation of, uh, of um, any loop option. And then also asking uh, for uh, the design of the um, of of the Wellington corridor from the federal government. I thought I think those to be uh, friendly amendments. If if that can be uh, if that can be worked through with the clerk in terms of wording. Okay, so we're on version six here. Uh, if you're keeping track, uh, so, <laughs> version ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, right. thank God for versioning in, in Word. Maybe you can work with staff because we do have quite a few more on the board to make sure the wording is correct, so we can present it on the screen to ensure all members of uh, this committee are aware of the actual wording. Uh, if you can go ahead, work with uh, 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 probably who's best, uh, uh, John? Can you uh, give us some guidance here? Chair uh, Vivi and I will uh, will type something up and get it over to the clerk's office, and then you you folks can decide where it goes. Okay, there won't be a version seven. We swear. All right. So uh, we're moving along. Uh, Vice Chair Leeper. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, to uh, Vivi and John. Um, actually, sorry. First, I should say that uh, you know, as as we discuss this idea of pedestrianizing Wellington Street, um, I'm going to disagree with uh, Councillor Luloff and and disagree with them. Uh, vehemently, I think, um, you know, we can take a look at the example of, of Washington, D.C. and the pedestrianization of spaces in front of the White House on, on Pennsylvania Avenue, for example, as an example of how we can really try to make the, uh, the city truly inviting to people who want to see it. But that's not a decision that we have to make today. I just want to make sure uh, from Vivi and John that if we approve the staff report, which is to approve of the um, Wellington Street with traffic street level option, that we are not fully closing the door, whether there is a tram on Wellington or whether that tram goes uh, in a Spark Street tunnel, that you know some future council has the opportunity to uh, pedestrianize Wellington Street. Vivi, do you want to speak to that, please? Yeah, so, um, so the question is, that um, recommendation three would not preclude a future um, uh, decision. Yeah, are we closing the door uh, if, if Wellington Street were chosen as uh, the okay. Wellington with traffic option? Would the yeah. door be closed at some point down the road? Okay, so um, look, recommendation three includes that we need to have um, a more detailed traffic analysis. And uh, certainly if you in the future or um, you would need to see the ramifications and because there, there would be trade-offs when you close off a significant um, uh, arterial through the downtown like this, the traffic will go somewhere else. So, uh, so it would be the, the trade-offs between, you know, how that traffic can be mitigated somewhere else versus um, achieving a vision that council may have about a pedestrian uh, and transit mall in this area. So I don't think you will be precluding it. Uh, our recommendation is based on the information, the study that has been done to date. And, uh, and that is um, that the option with traffic through Wellington uh, is not a showstopper. It has um, some issues, but not significant. Now, if you take traffic away from the entire corridor, or part of it, it's a different a different scenario that we would be describing to you. The design for a Wellington tram uh, would, if we wanted to leave the door open to pedestrianizing Wellington, uh, would the design of the where the rails are laid have to be different? Well, currently the uh, STO study shows um, two double tracks on the north side of Wellington. And whereas um, David McCroby's um, drawings show them 
in, uh, you know, straddling like on the north side as well as the south side of that large corridor. If it was double tracked on the north side of Wellington, though, would that preclude uh, a future pedestrianization? It would be. I don't think it would. I just think that the the um, design, the right of way, the elements in there would be in different locations. That's all. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't believe that this committee or this council uh, is willing to make a determination today that we want to pedestrianize Wellington. But my support for the staff report is on the basis that if some future council uh, chose that that is the direction in which it wants to go, uh, that it would be possible. So I'll be supporting uh, the report, um, but at every opportunity, I'll be seeing whether we can uh, open that pedestrianization question up a little bit, loop or no loop. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Chair. Great, thank you very much, Vice Chair. I'll go over to Councillor Dudas. Thank you. Um, I have an, uh, a couple of questions in respect to actually uh, Councillor Hubley's um, motion that is before us, um, as well as I wanted to get back to the conversation about the, uh, the report that's in front of us. I, I was hoping to get a Vivi, your opinion or John's opinion on the, the motion uh, in respect to the bridge. Sorry, I saw Jan, John's hand go up. John? <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? I missed it. So my question is, is that, you know, we're talking about uh, better interactions, better connections with our partners on the other side of the river. And uh, we're seeing this motion in front of us in respect to a, a sixth bridge. And while, you know, I 100% I uh, want us to prioritize sustainable transportation options, once again, having better connections and having that bridge as part of the holistic approach to our, to our connections um, and our transportation options. This seems to be a little at, at a left field for me, and I'm just curious as to John and Vivi, your opinion on this particular motion in terms of how it addresses our overall transportation network and our issues that we have with trucks in the core. So, so we were surprised also that we're, we're back into the bridge discussion. I mean, uh, you know, council, this council, previous councils have been through a lot on this bridge issue. Um, staff remain focused on the priorities that you've given us in the current TMP. And uh, in the future TMP, that's under discussion with you right now. So uh, in terms of uh, where we would sit in terms of support, our, our position is council has been clear on where your priorities are across all modes. Uh, a bridge was not in the mix, um, so we were surprised to see that that started to uh, to get into the the dialogue again. Um, so our position would be focus on what the priorities are, unless council wants to change those priorities. And I doubt that that's what you're suggesting at this point, because uh, uh, the bridge was not in the plan. Uh, and again, the TMP uh, is your opportunity to, if a bridge is a priority of council. Uh, in the community, that's where you would put this priority in in, uh, in the queue. But right now it's not in the queue for us. Our focus remains on all the other elements of the TMP. Okay, so so uh, once it, you're representing uh, a lot of people, you know, commuting from the East End, um, I think that for me, this particular motion, and, and forgive me, uh, Councillor Hubley, I know your intentions are well placed. I will not be supporting your particular motion because I think that we still need a lot of public consultation in respect to our economic opportunities and connecting the east end of our city with our connections in Gatineau. There are opportunities for greater connections with public transit, with our partners and our economic opportunities in Montreal. And we need to also continue to focus on how will we ever get trucks out of the downtown core, knowing that a tunnel is a very costly expenditure. So I think that, you know, I would like to see further conversation about it. Um, I would never say I'm going to advocate for one connection over another right now, but I'm just saying I think that I can't support this particular motion. And I appreciate, John, your, your input on that. Um, I did want to get back to the, to the report itself. And we've been talking about Wellington, um, but I'm also wondering, Vivi, from your perspective, the Spark Street option and the underground option, if, if uh, it were to go in that way, does that mean that the loop as a whole, as a vision, could not be a possibility? Uh, in our presentation, we said that both options do not um, preclude the loop. 
there would be some redundancy uh, for a segment because you, know, you have the east-west connection under Sparks and there's also an east-west connection on Wallington for the loop. So there is that. Uh, um, and in our presentation, we said that uh, the Sparks um, tunnel would uh, divert away and would not be as integrated with the loop. Okay, and, and that's good to know too, because even if we pass this report, which I will be, I will be uh, uh, you know, voting in favor of, it still doesn't stop us from having this longer term conversation about how can we get this better connection with Gatineau, how we can have a, a better connectivity um, in terms of our commuters, but also our businesses. Um, I would like to know though too, we've, we've been talking a lot about pedestrianizing uh, Wellington. And I have to say, I would be in favor of that. I think that a lot of my initial concerns with the tram project from STO would be addressed if it was a pedestrian thoroughfare. And I think that that would open up a whole new realm of possibilities for our parliamentary precinct. We've seen a, an op-ed um, from the NCC is there indication that the federal government would be willing to come to the table with money for this, that they would be able to, as, as uh, uh, one of our presenters had mentioned before, that we can uh, download Wellington to them? Is there a potential that they would take this on? Because I would not want to see Ottawa taxpayers covering the cost of a vision that would mean that we couldn't put money into stage three of LRT to Barhaven or Canada. Is that for me, Councillor? Are you asking me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, it seems that the, S that the feds are, um, STO has been in discussion with the federal government about funding the STO tramway project. And uh, I know that uh, the NCC have been interested in this loop for a while. So I would have to assume that the federal um, the government would have, is the, the major stakeholder in both of these uh, projects and not that this would not be part of the city of Ottawa's responsibilities for finance, uh, for funding it. Okay, but it's never been Don't, formally yeah. said by the NCC or any of the other federal partners that they'd be willing to take on pedestrianization of uh, Wellington. Councillor, uh, the, the draft motion we're pulling together, I'm gonna make it abundantly clear that it's all in. It's as Mr. Plamadon said, uh, if, if the federal government wants to fund the creation of a pedestrian mall in front of the Peace Tower and uh, a loop uh, and takeover, and I've been involved in lots of transfers with the NCC on these things, they're complicated, they're costly, uh, but the motion, uh, my recommendation to committee would be that you'd be crystal clear that you don't just study it, but that all costs for the loop and the mall, if you turn it into whatever, a pedestrian mall or a tourist mall, whatever it becomes, become the responsibility of the federal government for operating capital and the study costs. And that's the draft motion that we're working on right now that would come to you. Wonderful, thank you. That addresses my concerns, I appreciate that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Hoodley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, uh, I'll offer it up to Councillor Dudas because I don't want to leave it out there that uh, if she's not supporting this motion, I don't want people interpreting that, that she is not prioritizing one third of the city to be involved in the LRT project by excluding Barhaven and Canada and Stittsville. So I'm happy if uh, she wishes to amend it to take out the references to the bridge. Uh, so that would be the uh, last whereas uh, about the bridge and then the last five words rather than a six bridge. Uh, the intent of the motion from the start was to ensure that the mayor put on the table that the city was prioritizing funding for LRT phase three so that we could get uh, all the uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people that live in Barhaven and Canada and Stittsville onto the, the LRT system. I, I see it, it doesn't have to be connected to this system. Our concern, because I, I actually like some of the ideas that are being discussed here for uh, removing STO buses, um, but we have to get our position on the table. So that was the intent of the motion. And uh, so if it's the will of the committee, I'm more than happy to take those out because uh, they were put in by uh, other uh, uh, councillors suggesting we, we do this. So if that helps, uh, uh, Councillor Dudas, uh, I'm happy to do that. 
Great. It does. Think, Thank you. I, well, let's wait till we get to the end of uh, our delegation, or forgive me, delegation. So where am I? It's, it's 10 after 11 and I have to have the coffee. Uh, I just want to go through the rest of the committee members and we'll come back to that point at the end. Uh, okay, so I'll go to my questions then for staff. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so, Mr. Mancone, um, I like what you're saying about we have to make sure that we get the funding, all our costs included in the, the funding ask for this project. Uh, would that, in your mind, would that include taking care of this issue uh, where the Sir John A. Macdonald meets with Wellington? Because in, in my view, if we go with the, um, the loop and, and all the plans for Wellington, we're probably better off redirecting the traffic from Sir John A either right through uh, La Breton Flats or around La Breton Flats to connect to other downtown streets uh, to move that traffic through Ottawa, uh, at least until we can get a, a phase three project uh, funded. Would, would that be, in, would all those costs all be lumped into that? So just for clarity, the, the, if you approve the staff report, our position is that everything associated with the tram system uh, in, that's in this study is 100% uh, up to STO to get from the federal government or other funding sources. The City of Ottawa should not be on uh, the hook for any costs, and there will be costs, intersection uh, coordination, logistics, cycling, pedestrians, all those things. So the report makes it very clear it's all their costs. Uh, if anything associated with the loop, the amended motion or the motion that I'm, I'm crafting up uh, is going to be very clear that is there, if there's any direct or indirect costs, which Councillor Duda spoke to, you're speaking to, Chair Hubley, uh, that would all be part of the federal uh, 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 bill, whether it's study, uh, acquisition costs, capital and operating, and the, the indirect impacts associated with any loop operations. Uh, but hence, the importance of doing the study right in terms of moving forward on the vision. Okay, thank you. And finally, um, Councillor Brockington brought up a, an interesting idea this morning about uh, perhaps uh, going to e-buses for this. Uh, as everybody knows, we have a, a pilot project in the works uh, on e-buses. Would it be possible, Mr. Mancone, to reach out to your counterparts at STO to see if they would like to be a part of that pilot to see if uh, that might be a, a more affordable option to deliver uh, this uh, cross-border uh, service? Sorry, Councillor Hubley, are you speaking uh, with respect to the mode of the, the study that's before you today? Yes, uh, my understanding of Council and, and if Council Brockington is still on there, he can correct me if I didn't understand him right. But I thought he asked about the option of using e-buses instead of a tram. Yeah, perhaps I'll let the STO staff speak to that in detail. But at the high level, uh, the, the use of buses was looked at. And, and they, uh, uh, the study is a long-term view. And so the tram, it's not about the, uh, the fuel source because you're electrified either way. So you're getting the, uh, the environmental benefits. It's about capacity, future capacity on that. So perhaps you, you may want the STO to comment on that. This commits you to going with the tram option in terms of the, uh, the mode. So I, I'm a chair, I, I default to you in terms of comments from STO staff. Okay, uh, would STO like to comment on that? It, was that an option considered or something you would think of? Yes, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Patrick, I'm a, a, a director of planning at the STO. We did look at it. Uh, and even with articulated buses at the opening of the system, we'd have over 100 uh, buses per hour uh, crossing the Portage Bridge. So even that was not a, a, a suitable option to, uh, to meet the needs of reducing the number of buses. Okay, thank you. Okay, th that's all for me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Great. Councillor Menard. Great, thanks so much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the report to, to staff and also uh, Mayor uh, Pinojo Bay for being here. Nice to see you um, and all the great delegations. I think this is a real opportunity to improve our downtown core. Um, it's it's a great chance to start to implement uh, a new vision for Wellington. I think Wellington right now is is pretty unpleasant actually. Um, it's, it's not a great street to, to be on in general. Um, it doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel um, like you've got the space to move around. It's not what a street running in front of parliament should really look like in my view. And so it, 
converting to a tramway, I think, gives us the opportunity to improve pedestrian facilities, to really improve the, the cycling facilities, which is an economic advantage for the city, as, as well as an increase for safety. Uh, greening the street properly, um, you know, in terms of more trees and improving the view and the environment, the effect for tourists could be fantastic. Um, you know, also greening along the tracks as an option. Um, so I think this is important. The piece about, um, you know, approving this report um, and the option that we've got in front of us with cars on the street, I mean, I think we need to make sure we're, we're studying that appropriately. As Councillor Hubley notes in a different motion to be considered today, um, essentially induced demand is a real thing. And we need to prioritize our uh, streets in the course, especially for active transportation, for transit, to make sure that we can start to um, induce that type of demand. And so I, I do have some questions in terms of how the motion is, is phrased and I wanna make sure, cause I, I wanna support this. I wanna make sure we're, we're all speaking the same language here. Um, if we pass this motion today, is there gonna be more information and it's similar to Councillor Leeper's question, but it, I just wanna be clear. Is there gonna be more information to come back to us on a pedestrianized Wellington um, that says, look at this could be an option or this this isn't an option for us for these reasons is that going to come back to make a decision on it or is this it and and we're heading forward with the sparks if there's funding but if not wellington with traffic chair um as a good planner if there is anything that is different from what you're approving today, if at the next phase that something changes significantly from what you're um, approving today, I think it would be very prudent for a report to come back to you for consideration. Okay, and I mean, that, it's important because when I, when I spoke with uh, representatives uh, from Gatineau and um, uh, in looking through the report, it, it seemed that we were heading in the direction of approving a, a Wellington if, if, if need be, which I think it should be there, but that we don't lose that other option. And that, that's really important for me is, 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 I don't know, do we, do we need to approve a Wellington without, with cars today, or could we add a clause onto this? Do we need to add a clause uh, either to Ms. Chi or Mr. Manconi? Do we need to add a clause on there that says, look at we'll come back with that information um, along with this motion. I don't, I just don't want to lose that option. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, through you, I, I think, uh, I think everything that the, uh, the councillor is raising is, is in staff's uh, bullets under three. Uh, we're on the same page, councillor. It's, um, this isn't the end of the, of the work. There's a lot of heavy lifting that STO needs to do and needs to bring back to you if it's Wellington with a tram, what does that corridor, what does that cross section look like? And to Vivi's point, uh, the job of staff is to make sure that, um, you know, at the highest level, all of councils, City of Ottawa Council's policies, priorities and practices are uh, checked off. And uh, we'd be happy to bring back an information report or whatever to say, if it's with the tram, uh, here's what it looks like. Now, if you approve a motion that speaks to the vision of a loop, uh, that will further shape our view and our lens that we apply to it because you're going to want to keep the corridor flexible in terms of where the tracks go and, and all those sorts of things. So uh, in, in to making that real, again, if the motion's approved, we would work with STO to say, okay, if it does get converted to a pedestrian mall, how does your plan fit in there? And we need to look at that. And we'd be happy to take direction from committee to come back and share that uh, when we get those details. But let's make sure we're clear. We got to take care of the pedestrians, the tour buses, vehicle traffic, safety, the precinct, and everything that's outlined in the report, and and make sure that we apply all of your your policies and your practices and your your current visions on the importance of all the modes that uh, use that corridor. Okay, thank you very much for that. That's helpful. Um, and uh, I think in the report, there's a couple pieces mentioning around, particularly around our, our regular operations, so snow clearing, for example, uh, and and the cost and where where that would be realized and, and what options we'd have for that. And so 
And one of the things raised was there's no uh, snow um, storage area uh, in this case. Um, and so, and that we'd have to remove snow, I, th I think almost every time after a heavy, a heavy snowfall is what it was saying. And so um, I guess the, the question is, is that more um, amenable under a pedestrianized space, easier for us to, to deal with under a pedestrianized space versus one with, with traffic? And in the staff report, there was also a cost for the Wellington tram with the traffic option, but I, I don't know if I saw it with, without it. And so I'm wondering on those two pieces. Well, uh, just uh, some thoughts on that. Uh, you know, that's my old world. I used to run public works. So you got to remember that Wellington is uh, one of the highest maintained streets in our network right now. There's very high standards that the NCC has imposed on us. Uh, and uh, there's agreements to that effect. Uh, you can argue it both ways, whether it's a tram system on a mixed use corridor or a pedestrian mall. Some would argue that a pedestrian mall have higher costs uh, because there's a lot of handwork and so forth. Uh, we're not worried about all those things. We'll figure that stuff out. Uh, and even with the tram in the current configuration, uh, remembering that we had a future an earlier phase of our sys LRT system that was going to be all on road. So we know uh, the costs and how to do that snow removal and things like that. I think in the grand scheme of things of some of the bigger policy discussions that you're having today, um, I would I would uh, just let you know that uh, we, we know how to sort through the snow stuff. There'll be a premium. And again, those are all the details that we can sort out and, and move forward on. Okay, and is there a, a cost estimate without traffic at this point or just the one with traffic at this point? It's the cost to build the tram. So the tracks will be there through the whole corridor anyway. Um, so the, the without, traffic was not part of the, the picture when they were costing the project. Okay, okay, thank you very much uh, for your help. Appreciate that, back, back to you, Chair. Great, thank you very much, uh, Sean. Uh, Councillor McKenney. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for everyone for coming out today and for the, the conversation that we've had. It's, uh, for me, it's uh, one of the more encouraging conversations we've had around transit, around pedestrianizing uh, a main, um, street in the downtown um you know people often say and it's it's not untrue that you know um somerset ward you know kind of goes up to sparks even and beyond that um uh, residents who live downtown uh, don't don't travel they don't travel uh down sparks because they don't live there uh then they don't uh, travel down Wellington because it's it's unpleasant uh, you know unless you're a tourist and you're going straight over to uh, to visit on the hill it's uh, it's an unpleasant street uh, with uh, a lot of traffic fast traffic and um, and uh, you know not not particularly safe for for cyclists and there are plans to uh, to provide cycling um, uh, options for for Wellington, but uh, today's conversation around pedestrianizing Wellington is the first time we've had that in, I think, this forum and in in, in a serious forum, and uh, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, I just I just want to learn from staff, um, get your opinion on um, the the motion in front of us. So. You, you responded to Councillor Menard's question about the report and if we, if we accept if transit or trans, um, transportation committee today, not a member, uh, accept this and council does, uh, it does not preclude or it does not put off the um, notion of pedestrianizing uh, Wellington. Councillor Fleury's motion, and I'll tell you the, the whereas that I'm concerned about, um, uh, where I think it's a fourth of the two options presented by STO tram report, a below ground option would mitigate all issues associated with surface option and allow city streets to evolve as future visions are consolidated and plans take shape. Um, does that whereas uh, move us further away from, so that I, I don't agree with that whereas because I think it, again, it, it establishes the tunnel option as the as the uh, preferred option. Um, I think all options should be on the table. I think we should be looking at them all. But the, but does that whereas and and as a result that the motion uh, move us further away from pedestrianizing uh, Wellington Street or does it move us closer to pedestrianizing Wellington Street? 
I think um, my view of it, I mean, you have to ask clerks for their opinions, but I think if you approve a motion or amended motion or a standalone motion that you're going to ask staff to get the federal government to look at a pedestrian mall and uh, a loop, I think it neutralizes that and, and just it, it, you're, you're keeping all your options open, uh, Councillor, is, is what I'm saying. Okay. That's my interpretation of it. Uh, okay. the, the standalone flurry motion, as I said in my opening comments, uh, is not technical in nature. It doesn't uh, go against the staff report. If you do a, an augmented uh, motion or add to it that you're gonna ask the federal government to look at these things, I think you're keeping all your options open. Okay. And um, you uh, mentioned earlier, um, uh, Mr. Mancone, when you were talking about, you know, from a staff city perspective, you know, we look at, you know, our priorities of transit, vehicle traffic, safety, et cetera. Um, well, when, you, when you consider vehicular traffic as a priority, can you tell me what you consider that to mean in this area? Is it, you know, ensuring, obviously, we don't want interprovincial traffic going down Booth Street. We can't divert it down a residential street. I have, actually have a, an inquiry coming about Booth Street later today because it's it's such a mess. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have Lyon and Kent, which are essentially highways that we really need to start narrowing. They're, uh, you know, have have an immense amount of capacity on those streets. Um, are you looking at at the options of of diverting some of that traffic down Lyon and Kent to ensure that we would be able to keep? Wellington uh, pedestrianized between Bank and Elgin. I think those are all the details that the, the study would we need to look at. Vivi, do you have any comments? Uh, that, that's um, correct, uh, John. And um, sorry, my video is not on. There we go. And, and of course, we have to ensure that our, our lens of review would be um, supporting council policies and we know that in your community um in your ward councillor uh that uh, the issue of traffic on booth street with residential homes there is a big concern so that's how we would um review all the information that comes through this study with that lens as well uh, mr okay. chair do you allow me a comments on that mm -hmm. Okay, so, so in terms of traffic, there are two things. When, when we put the, tr the tramway on Wellington, it affects greatly the access to the Parliament Hill. So as um, uh, Vivici said, there will be no more left turn and right turn from Wellington to access the hill. Traffic will need to go through side street. Pedestrianizing Wellington between Bank and Elgin only affects through traffic. So one of the avenue you could uh, look at is if you favor the tunnel option for the, for the tramway in terms of better integration with the, with the uh, Gardino LRT and, and uh, ease of construction, you could still run with pedestrianizing the Wellington between Bang and Elgin as, as uh, being a city um, beautification element and not impacting the access to the hill, so having a lot less impact on downtown traffic. And then if uh, the loop comes at a later time, it could very well be integrated. And why we have a um, uh, major impact to uh, access to the hill is uh, we are operating a two-way tramway with really short headway, so we need two tracks. With the loop, it's also very possible to have section with, for example, only one track, because at, at a lower, uh, at a lower uh, headway, you could operate with only one track between Elgin and uh, Portage Bridge, for example, and still being able to keep all these left turns and right turns. So choosing one option doesn't preclude going further with all the benefits of the other option and trying to mitigate uh, constraints. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, I just wanna be clear though that there are many streets outside of residential streets where uh, traffic impacts are not my problem. Um, we want people to take transit. We can't keep roadways open for them. 
and we can't keep the option of, you know, single vehicle traffic going through the downtown all hours of the day as an easy option. Um, so again, it's, I, I am very, I, 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 I watch residential streets. We don't want to have that impact on, on families, uh, individuals on their own residential streets, but holding up traffic in the downtown for people who continue to, and, and a lot of people will continue to choose to drive, but the more people we can uh, discourage from coming into the downtown uh, in cars, uh, as we, you know, as we progress as a city, I think, uh, I don't think that uh, that making it easier is going to uh, also align with our, our um, priorities of getting people onto transit. So I just want to make sure that I've laid that out for staff when you are looking at the, the impacts. Um, yeah, it's not so much uh, making it easier for people to drive through the downtown. That is, uh, that is the, the key concern. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fleury. Uh, merci, le, Monsieur le Président. Uh, I, I just want to express that I'm fully supportive of what uh, Councillor McKinney's goals are of uh, making Wellington uh, more friendly. I just feel that the report that is presented to us today doesn't get, affirm uh, the designs of any of the streetscape that it be Wellington or Spark Street. So my, my motion, and if you re read that therefore be it resolved, really speak to the aspiration of a loop and how to advance that and, and refer a uh, factual element from the report. And you know the, the report, like it or not, does favor Spark Street as the underground option where we're, there, there's a lot of conflicting discussions and information because the city of Gatineau in the last week said, well, look, we're concerned that we can't afford this, right? So that's brought less interest for the Sparks Underground element and, and the discussion around Wellington. I remain very concerned with Wellington because of the, what I'll call the end step, right? Which, you know, there are, uh, there are a lot of elements there that without a loop, uh, in my perspective, create an end point right into one of the grand visions of our, our city, which is walk, walking up Elgin Street, seeing the Chateau Laurier, seeing the, the canal and, and parliament uh, precinct. Uh, comme commentaire final, uh, One final comment. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the STO for putting forward this uh, file. It's an important file for the residents of Gatineau. It's not an easy file for us uh, here in Ottawa. There are several points of interest here. You know, things we want to see done for uh, Wellington Street uh, and also uh, the possibility of integration of the two transportation systems and there's also the leadership of the community and uh, the proposal for the construction of a loop. I think that the loop might be the alternative that might resolve um, all the issues. So we would have a loop that would uh, connect uh, people from Elmer to downtown Ottawa. I would go even further than that. I think uh, in the first uh, in the first briefing that we got from STO in May, they said that Bayview was a secondary option, an alternative. Imagine, imagine just how good it would be to have uh, a loop through the downtown and then to use uh, the Prince of Wales uh, bridge to connect uh, with Bayview. That could be the alternative. Uh, John and his team have told us that it's not a, a very good uh, it's not uh, the ultimate solution, but it's something that could be an alternative. So we've talked a lot about vision. It's very important for that vision to look at all uh, possibilities. Um, someone from Gatineau should be able to get to the Ottawa airport without having to take their car. That's important for them. It's important for residents of Ottawa as well. So we have to really have uh, a total uh, holistic uh, a vision for transportation in this city. I'm quite uh, prepared uh, to add uh, Mr. Manconi's uh, suggestions to my motion um, based on uh, what uh, the federal government might want to do with uh, the Wellington corridor. I think it's important to clarify that uh, I can't uh, support Mr. Hubley's uh, motion 
especially if uh, the idea of the bridge remains within his uh, mo his motion. We have uh, very different uh, visions and objectives, of course. It's important to invest uh, in uh, public transit, but it's also important uh, well, there's currently a study going going on uh, on a six uh, bridge. Uh, I'm a resident uh, of uh, the area of the city that's impacted by these uh, 18 wheel trucks uh, rumbling down our streets. So I think uh, we have to look at that issue as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Deans, please. And I have to say that I do like the option of the loop. I don't know if it's a pipe dream financially or if it's something that could become a reality. But what I worry about is approving the staff report as it is today. And I'm wondering if it would not make more sense to approve it in principle, but once it's more informed that it would come back for a final approval, especially we're hearing a lot of um, concern raised about item number three um, with so many unknowns. So I, I would be more comfortable if this was an approval in principle and that eventually when there's a lot more information than we have today about how we're moving forward that uh, there would be another opportunity to give a final approval and I guess I'll look to either Vivi or John um, to tell us if, if that sort of two-pronged approach would um, be prudent. Yes, Chair. Uh, what I would recommend on that is STO needs to uh, to hear a go, no go decision from you today. So um, what I would recommend, and I'd like STO to comment on this also, and Vivi, if she's got any concerns, is um, I would suggest to you that rather than approval in principle, you approve the report, if that's what you do, and that you give us direction that you want to hear the detailed information back on the, um, so you've approved the what, you want to hear the how so that you're not closing the door on the future vision. You're dealing with the pedestrian issue, the uh, traffic issues and so forth. Uh, but I do want uh, Councillor Deans to get STO's feedback. They're, they're, uh, they need to hear go, no go because they're looking for funding and so forth. So uh, if that approach works for you, it's some kind of a, a conditional come back with the following specifics uh, so that uh, committee hears the details and we don't close any doors on that future vision. I don't know if that works for you or not. I'm willing to listen to what STO has to say. My problem is that just coming back and telling us what they're going to do sort of is not maybe enough for me. The devil is always in the detail. And I think we're, this is a major decision with long-term implications for our city and especially the downtown core, which is everything. And there are a lot of unknowns in here. So uh, I will look to SDO to comment on this. Is there a way that we can give a signal that we're willing to talk about it and work with you to advance it, but um, being prudent to represent our constituents and our taxpayers on this side of the river and a very important um, national area for the entire country that we would like to see more detail before we give the final go, no go. Great. Is there any further comment on that? Just yes, please. Yeah, so Mr. Chair, if I uh, uh, may, I'll, I'll answer to uh, Councillor Deans. Uh, I, I, I've very much agree with uh, what Mr. Manconi mentioned in terms of uh, being able to move forward. I think uh, uh, throughout this project since the beginning, we've really worked hand in hand with the uh, uh, city staff in Ottawa. It's been a very uh, good collaboration and we rely as well on their expertise and, and recommendation on when and how to come back to you. Uh, Mr. Manconi uh, rightfully said that uh, we still have many steps uh, to go through, but I think, and, and I, would, I would let the, uh, the mayor obviously address that question, but in terms of securing funding and knowing what we can
in advance, it will really allow us to make uh, the next step. So uh, uh, approving this this report will will help us, you know, uh, take on the uh, the future steps in that uh, on this important project. Okay, well, I will look to the mayor and thank you for being with us this morning, but would a, an approval in principle without populating the details or without giving sort of a carte blanche on this project without understanding the details not be sufficient for you to move forward? I'll answer in French, uh, first of all. I'd like to thank uh, the staff uh, of uh, the city of Ottawa and OC Transpo as well for working so closely with us uh, since the start of this project. Uh, now, this is a project which is very, very complicated. It's the biggest uh, project in Gatineau's history. It's also a project which is uh, complex. Uh, it's the most complex uh, public transit uh, project uh, in uh, Canada. It involves uh, several uh, federal departments, uh, two provinces. And as many of you have, have already said, uh, there are issues which are vital, very important for both of us. Uh, safety, symbols, uh, technical aspects. Uh, what it needs is a great level of uh, commitment and engagement uh, from all partners uh, so that we can move forward as quickly as possible. And because uh, I think it's vital to improve our, our transit system, but we at the same time, we have to be as careful as possible in our approach. Uh, Ms. Deans, uh, your uh, concerns are shared by us. Uh, the city of Ottawa sits uh, on the project's uh, executive board. Uh, so no decisions will be made without uh, uh, the, the city of Ottawa being involved. Uh, the, you sit on all the technical committees, all executive committees. The mayors are represented uh, themselves. Um, so uh, you've expressed concerns today. So we're taking those uh, concerns into account and we have to take them into account because at each stage, our partners, our Ottawa partners are saying, no, stop, wait a minute. We have to make sure that uh, it meets uh, the needs uh, of Ottawa residents. As Mr. Manconi has just said, of course, uh, we need uh, your agreement this morning so we can move forward, but you're not giving us a blank check. It's not carte blanche uh, because uh, you as partners, you sit on all committees to make sure that we're working together and moving forward uh, in unison. Uh, for Gatineau, it's in our interest uh, to take uh, your concerns into account uh, because we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where there's a a breakdown between two cities because we fail to meet uh, your uh, concerns or deal with your concerns. That's the only guarantee that I can give you. We're working together quickly and carefully. Both cities and both mayors are involved uh, in each stage. Uh, and I really appreciate your uh, willingness to try and come up with solutions. The discussions are always complex, of course, uh, you know, uh, you, you're dealing with the federal government, with PSPC, for example. They're showing great cooperation with us as well. That's great. Uh, and uh, it, this is the way it will continue to be. Now, people have uh, talked about uh, this being an STO project, but it, it's, uh, it's a project for all of us. It has to be that way if it uh, is to work out uh, the way we want it, uh, to meet the needs uh, of uh, Gatineau and Ottawa residents and also of uh, the National Capital Region. To be honest with you, I'm very surprised that we're so far advanced in this project. Uh, because it's been a very, very tough uh, project, but the goodwill on all sides has uh, allowed us uh, to make the progress we've already made. Uh, we've taken note uh, of all your comments this morning, and I'm sure the Ottawa staff has done the same thing, and I'm sure we'll be able to meet your concerns going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, in English, uh, a condensed version of that so that everyone on the committee is aware of what the mayor said. Is that possible? I thought there was interpretation. Sorry about that. Well, there is on the bottom of the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Councillor Deans, if you'd like, I can give a quick summary and I will ask uh, uh, Mr. Mayor or Patrick to correct me if I go wrong, because I think this is a very important point that you've raised here, if you'd like. Yes, please. Uh, so uh, if you give them the approval today, 
from a technical perspective, that does not mean they have green light to do whatever they like. It is your corridor, it is your side of the city and this committee and the chair and the mayor have been very clear, both mayors have been clear from day one. Our job as staff is to protect uh, the interests of the city of Ottawa, all those users and that entire very important corridor. Like I've always said, there's only one peace tower and it's on Wellington Street in this, in this country and we need to really be cautious as to how we deal with it. Uh, there will be multiple checkbacks to uh, committee on that. And what I was suggesting to you, your question is that if you want staff to report back on all those technical things, uh, we, can, we can absolutely do that. There is a lot of work to be done to make sure that we're congruent with all the questions that you've raised today. And I think the mayor uh, on, on the Gatineau side was confirming and aligned to, uh, to your concerns and acknowledging that they're, uh, they don't get green light to do whatever they like on that corridor. That is your roadway. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, with your direction, if you wanna give us direction, uh, we will certainly be back to you. Uh, I think it would be prudent to be back to you with all these specifics uh, that have been raised today. Uh, Monsieur Leclerc, Monsieur Mayer, uh, did I get that right? Uh, that was perfect for me. Okay, thank you. Um, I, okay, that gives me some comfort. I guess the question is when you come back and report, can council or committee, if they have particular concerns impact how it will be addressed or is it just a report without any action behind it? I'm, go I'm gonna uh, get Vivi to comment in a moment, but let's think through what will probably occur here. I think the first thing you're going to want to hear is if STO uh, secures funding that can cover the tunnel or not, that opens up your first major decision. And we obviously wanna come back and report back to you. That then narrows the scope down which gets aligned and we ensure we're, if, if Wellington then becomes the preferred corridor because they're not gonna get the funding for the tunnel, then our job is to make sure that if you approve the motion that's gonna talk about the pedestrian mall and a future loop, we would come back with a report to say, how are we preserving all that so those options stay open and remain relevant and uh, available and feasible. Uh, Vivi, did I get that right? Yes, John. Uh, and of course, um, we're always guided by, um, you know, if there's something significant that changes, we, well, first of all, we need to inform. And if there's something that changes that requires council decision, the report would be about a decision for approval. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, Council Deans. I'm looking on the board. Uh, I don't see any further questions. I do have a question uh, for our mayor of Gatineau. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think uh, it's been on public record uh, that uh, yourself and our mayor, Mayor Jim Watson, have been pretty public uh, that they see funding for transportation, uh, electrified especially, uh, is a priority over uh, the construction of a bridge. Would that be correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It is. Um, now, for us, um, traffic, uh, traffic is a major issue. If we build a bridge, uh, well, to my mind, uh, instead of being stuck on the 50, you'll be stuck on a bridge in your car. We have to look at uh, transportation in a holistic fashion. That's what the NCC is doing. They're undertaking analysis for transportation issues, including trucks, uh, in, including active transportation. And after that, uh, after that's done, we'll be able to actually see whether we need to build a new bridge or not. But in the short term, the major issue for us, well, the only issue for us really, the priority issue for us is the tramway project. Um, and the difficulty with this project is that there's no plan B, if you like. Uh, that's why we have to really come to an agreement at the three levels of federal government and our two municipalities, uh, because plan B can't be a bus, uh, a bus system. We've already got to a uh, stage where bus congestion is overwhelming. There can't be a bus based uh, uh, system and has to be a tramway system. If we don't do that, uh, where the, the situation is going to get steadily worse year over year. So our, that's our priority. It's a priority, a, the major priority. The major priority for us has to be improving uh, public transit in the west of Gatineau. And while I have the floor, I'd like to say that uh, the loop uh, 
uh, is not in contradiction with uh, this project. Uh, I think I see this more like a phase one, phase two. We have to deal with the immediate uh, issue, and then uh, we can look at a future loop, uh, which doesn't only concern both downtowns on either side of the river, because uh, on the in eastern Gatineau, we built uh, the rapid bus system uh, the rails are, are under the bus route. Uh, so what we'll be able to do is to replace those buses uh, with uh, with tramways. So that's our vision for the future, where on both sides of the river, we'll have our tramway system. We uh, support that integrated uh, system. But first of all, we have to fund uh, the immediate issues, the current project that we presented to you today. And then we have to perhaps uh, design it in such a way that a future loop is possible. My only concern with the with the loop, uh, and this has been repeated several times, I don't want it to compromise the ability of the partners to actually make a, a very prompt decision on the project we put forward today. That's my major concern because people in Ottawa or in Gatineau see this as a priority. It's a priority for people in Ottawa and for people in Gatineau. We have to provide the best possible service to people in Gatineau. And we have to get as many buses off the streets uh, in Ottawa as possible. Thank you. Great. Uh, merci, uh, and I, I concur with that. Um, look, uh, we have a, a few motions in front of us today, and uh, just as way of, uh, of giving a bit of a wrap up, uh, in, in Alan's motion, I think, you know, it really highlights uh, where some of those priorities do lie. Um, our mayors have been very public about it. Uh, look, our transportation master plan is on pause because the world is changing. And the one thing that I think is, is pretty well known is we want to move ahead with a lot of these projects uh, to electrify rail or put trams in. Uh, at the same time, um, you have to set priorities. There's only one taxpayer. And at the end of the day, uh, this could send a strong message uh, right here through this committee that, uh, look, when we're talking $3 billion for a tram system and we're talking over a billion, maybe a billion and a half dollars for a bridge, I think this is our opportunity to really send a strong message uh, to the federal government that uh, it's not to say in the future it won't happen, like the mayor has mentioned, uh, about looking at, at the transit studies, but we can't, we can't even do them right now. COVID has changed the world of those traffic patterns. And as somebody that's worked on this bridge file, even before I got to office, 13 years uh, playing with this file with my Eastern colleagues, and uh, even though Kettle's been selected three times, we're back at this update again, and apparently, uh, through well, thanks to CBC and their discovery, Kettle was selected a fourth time in some report as well. While they're busy doing their studies and traffic patterns have changed, we have an opportunity to go ahead with this project. So I'm going to ask Councillor Hubley, do you wish to leave the wording of the bridge in there, which was the original intent? want the motion to remain as it is to send a clear message that we understand there's one taxpayer. Uh, we also want our residents uh, to know that we have their needs as uh, top of our mind uh, in these discussions and every other thing that we do. So hopefully Councillor Dudas will reconsider and help send that message. Thank you. Okay, we were Finished up there. I was asking. Uh, I was asking. Uh, doing a bit of a wrap up there. I see. Okay, the name is off the board. Um, so uh, again, I will be supporting. Uh, uh, first of all, let's go motion by motion. But uh, just to clarify, somebody just asked me. Uh, I will be supporting Councillor Hubley's motion as it stands. So on motion number one, uh, this is the last confrontational one: a branding and livery of the STO tram vehicles. Is this motion carried? Carried. 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 On motion number two, prioritizing investment in transit over a six bridge. Uh, I'll call up your yeas and nays, and uh, maybe Kelly, you can read out the list. Mr. Chair, are we not debating on the motion? Are we, uh, no, the motion was presented. We didn't have a chance to debate. I Actually, Councillor, that's why it's been there the whole time. We had the opportunity for questions to staff and debate. 
and I believe you made mention of your concern about the bridge patterns as well. Uh, but at this point, we're going to the vote on motion number two. Um, Councillor Luloff? Yes. Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor El Shantiri, Councillor Deans? Sorry, Councillor Deans? Yes. Uh, Councillor Fleury? No. Councillor Menard? Yes. Councillor Kitts? Yes. No. <laughs> Councillor Drews? Yes. Councillor Hubley? Yes. Vice Chair Leeper? Yes. And Chair? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion number three, uh, preserve the access to the National War Memorial and ceremonial guards uh, traditional route. Uh, is this item carried? Carried. Carried. Uh, I'll have to ask Kelly to put uh, motion number four, and I believe motion number five, uh, due to the nature of the motions, there's two of them now. Uh, motion number four was uh, Councillor Fleury's motion. Mr. Chair, I did receive the amendment. Uh, I think they're, they're friendly to add to, to the motion I presented. Mr. Chair, would you like me to read? Uh... Yeah, I think that would be, uh, unless we can just get it on the screen. People always like to read them on the screen and I, it's probably more fair, even though I'll take us a minute or two more. Sorry to keep you away from everyone's lunch. Apologies, Councillor Flurry. The wording that we received does that replace the full motion? No, it's add, it adds to uh, to the therefore be it resolved. Okay, I'll put it up, and you can let me know if it's involved in the right spot. So there's a where, Mr. Chair. Can I speak to uh, what was shared with uh, Mr. Mancone from Mr. Yeah. Mancone? Great. I just want to make sure it's on the screen. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, go ahead and do that. So uh, just so everyone's clear, what was added is one whereas, which is says the whereas the loop is a vision of Ottawa Gatineau transit loop served by buses and trains, which would provide convenient daily transportation between two cities and can transform Wellington Street in front of Parliament buildings into a pedestrian mall. And then adding to the be it further resolved, the following here. So be it further resolved that direction to staff to include a study funded 100% by the federal government for the feasibility of a transit loop and conversation of a Wellington Street to the pedestrian mall in the update to the City of Ottawa TNP currently underway. Be it further resolved that the study confirmed that if either project is determined to be feasible and approved by the City of Ottawa Council that the cost of any further studies, including design, construction, operations, and maintenance of the potential upload of Wellington Street to the federal government be borne by the federal government, and be it further resolved that the City of Ottawa federal funding priorities for the City of Ottawa continue to be funding for, uh, for stage three, which I think I had in my motion. I think this one has moved the last one. Okay. Uh, so on that, uh, John, did sure. uh, you want- Point you of want order, to... sir? Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, um, it's it's a long list of be it uh, resolves. Could this be circulated before we vote on it? I just like a chance to read it properly. Okay, yeah, no, that 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 is certainly fair, Kelly. If you can circulate that, uh, we'll definitely go back to this final motion um, on that. Maybe uh, just having a look on the board here because we have one more item to deal with. Uh, I guess we'll have to go back to this and to the base report. Okay, I'll just give uh, Vice Chair Leeper a minute. And I see Caitlin has turned her screen on. So am I still doing everything correct, Caitlin? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. All right. So 
concrete, and I believe it's now been circulated. And I'll just give a uh, vice chair looper a minute to peruse that. I haven't received it yet, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, if it would assist, Seth can put the motion back on the screen. Uh, I believe that the we might do some cleanup to which is a, a be it resolved and which is a there be it further resolved. But my understanding is Councillor Fleury's original uh, resolutions are there and are preceded by the new resolutions that were proposed by staff. So if Kelly wants to put that back on the screen, it may assist those who have not received it yet. Maybe just a, a good slow scroll. Kelly, if I may, I know we didn't, it's bizarre because we're not in person, but I think the last, be it further resolved, that's in yellow, actually is the same as my last for, uh, be it resolved. Is that better? I think so, yeah. Thanks, Tim. I'm good. Good. Thank you, uh, and thanks for that. And uh, you know, this is always a challenge when we're doing this uh, this last minute kind of pokery pokery. But uh, this is version six and a half B or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, on that motion, is this uh, is this motion carry? carried? Carried. Great. Thank you. Carried. And uh, I'll just go back to the list. And on the main uh, report, is that received? Received. Received. Great. Thank you. On to the item that is now added to, added to the list. Uh, thank you, uh, committee colleagues, for adding it today. It is of an urgent nature. I'll get the motion put up on the screen if I could, Kelly. Sorry, I'm keeping you busy today. Great, and uh, Councilman Menard. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, so I've read through the rules of procedure uh, motion already. Whereas Elgin Street is heavily used by motorized vehicles and cyclists, and whereas a cyclist was hit and injured by a truck on Elgin Street in June 2020, <laughs> whereas the 2020 to 2024 Road Safety Action Plan calls for an integrated, comprehensive, and proactive strategy for making our roads safer for all users and for continuing to advance towards zero fa fatal and serious injury collisions, whereas transportation services would like to pilot the use of quick curb, a continuous rubber curbing lane separator system with plastic ballers or markers, which would be supplied by QMB barrier and can be redeployed elsewhere when traffic volumes are back to pre-COVID volumes. Whereas the estimated cost to install such a system on Elgin Street between Argyle Avenue and Isabella Street is 78,000 and 10,000 for winter maintenance for the 2020-2021 winter season. And whereas the Elgin Street renewal project has funds available to fund this uh, initiative. Therefore, be it resolved that Transportation Committee recommend Council approve that a temporary semi-permanent bike lane be constructed on, I'll go to my, oh, here we go. Uh, the east side of Elgin Street between Argyle Avenue and Isabella Street and on the west side of Elgin Street between 35 meters north of Catherine Street and Isabella Street. Be it further resolved uh, that the evaluation of the Catherine Street and Elgin Street intersection take place in the months following the completion of the bike lane to report on the intersection safety and effectiveness of the product 
and be it further resolved that the cost to install the quick curb system and to winter maintain the temporary semi-permanent bike lane for 2020-2021 winter season in the amount of 88,000 be funded from the Elgin Street Renewal Project. And I just, uh, if I can chair, just wanted to thank uh, Councillor McKenney for uh, bringing this motion for, I'm doing it uh, on Councillor McKenney's behalf. Uh, and also to um, uh, Vivi Chi and John Manconi and Phil Landry, who all came out uh, to Elgin Street. This is the area where we, we have uh, pylons up right now. And so I just appreciate um, them coming out and doing that. Uh, it's on both sides of the bridge. I'm not sure if Councillor McKenney also wants to comment on it, but just wanted to thank uh, the work there and, and staff's work uh, to, to bring us forward. Thank you. Um... I um, I just want to I'm I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Um, not much more to say. It's pretty straightforward. But this is uh, an area of Elgin, uh, you know, for um, <clears throat> from uh, Laurier uh, to um, the area uh, McLeod. It's uh, 30 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's uh, it's calmed, uh, but then it does open up into a you know four lanes and. Um, We've seen um, traffic um, uh, speed through here and uh, uh, quite a catastrophic uh, accident that occurred very shortly after the, the street was opened up where a young woman was catastrophically injured at, at that intersection. So just to allow for the calming, uh, continuation of the calming of, of Elgin in that area, uh, to be able to you know, link uh, people who uh, are cycling uh, onto uh, you know Main Street, Hawthorne, um, and, and give people uh, that safety. Uh, it worked well as a as a really temporary pilot uh, this past summer, and uh, I really want to thank staff for for working with us, staff in transportation uh, planning, uh, to look at this um, cool little pilot project where you know the rubber curbs will be dropped from a, from a truck. It'll be a first in Ottawa. Um, and uh, I think a pretty exciting kind of um, uh, temporary, but more permanent temporary, if you will, um, uh, lane. Um, and, uh, and also staff in uh, planning infrastructure, economic development for, um, uh, you know, helping us secure the funding out of the Elgin Street project. The Elgin Street project was uh, probably one of our best managed projects in this city. It was always on time. Actually, it was always a few weeks ahead of time. Um, and as a result, uh, there were some savings and uh, they were able to identify uh, some savings for this uh, for this pilot. So um, if it works well, it uh, can be used in everyone's ward at some point. It's, uh, it's uh, an inexpensive way to really provide um, very safe transit for uh, for people who uh, cycle. So thank you. Great, uh, thank you for that. And uh, also a bit of a shout out to Vice Chair Leeper as well, because uh, we both had the opportunity to see what some of these products look like. And I think this can be a tremendous uh, uh, pilot and test to see how it works. Uh, so on uh, that item, is that item carried? Carried. Carried. Great. And uh, just real quickly on item number one, I said received. Yeah, bad Tim. Uh, it should have been carried. So is that item carried? Carried. Carried. So at this point, I'm going to go down. Mr. Chair, could it be carried with the direction that Mr. Manconi suggested earlier in the meeting oh. about coming back? John, you good with that? That was the answer. Sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. The direction's clear. We're going to come back to you on all those technical issues. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And so, Chair, it's carried as amended. Carried as amended. Thank you. Uh, so we have no one. Oh, we do have an inquiry, I believe. Do we, Kelly? If you could put that up on the screen. So this is a, maybe briefly, uh, if you could speak to this, who brought this forward? This is a, Sean on behalf of Catherine. Yeah. 
Actually, this was uh, Councillor Leeper on my behalf. Oh, thank you. I'm sharing the pain today. <laughs> I'll, I'll just ask Catherine to, to read it. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Jack. Uh, pretty straightforward. Booth Street between Albert Street and Somerset Street is uh, a narrow four block stretch with residences on both sides for the entire length. Unfortunately, in addition to the high volume of traffic it carries every day, especially during peak periods, Booth Street is being used by a tremendous volume of heavy trucks uh, moving from Highway 417 to the interprovincial um, construction projects. Heavy, heavy trucks are not allowed on Booth Street, but uh, signage and police enforcement are uh, not discouraging them. Uh, recent testing by Explotech of the effects of this illegal truck traffic on homes close to a speed hump um, that was done on behalf of the city found that a total of 289 vibration events above the city of Ottawa PPV threshold of 0.5 mm per second were recorded by the sensor located in the second story bedroom uh, during the 27 hour monitoring period. These are well above the city's limit for nuisance vibrations. Residents who live close to the speed hump want it removed while other residents appreciate its positive impact on lowering speeds. Additionally, cyclists also avoid this part of Booth Street due to the high volume of traffic. This restricts their access to Pimacy Transit Station, the multi-use pathway on Albert and Scott, and the recreational trails on both sides of the Ottawa River, which can be accessed via Booth. Um, could staff please advise on the following? Uh, first, what measures can be implemented to reduce and eliminate illegal truck traffic on the street, including changing the geometry of the approach to Booth and Somerset at Albert, uh, at, at Booth and Somerset and at Albert? Uh, and second, what medium and long-term options can staff recommend that would mitigate the vibrations to nearby homes while continuing to calm traffic on Booth Street? Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. So that inquiry is now... Uh, put in. Uh, I don't see anything on other business. Uh, we have adjournment and the next meeting is November 16th. No, oh, wait, November 16th, 2020. Well, that's today. So, <laughs> Kelly, what's the next meeting date? December 2nd. There we go. Budget. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thanks all.